despite the recent addition of Scott Rowland, runs and wins have been scarce. Slugger Albert Pujols leads the cards with 84 RBIs and has key crucial wins with home runs in two of the last three games. The Cardinals still hold a slim lead in the center. Move on, move Mike Piazza. The Mets are desperately clinging to their wild card hopes, led by Mike Piazza and a rejuvenated Mo Vaughn. Tonight, they turn to ace right-hander Pedro Astacio. Where we at? Bush Stadium, St. Louis, Louis, Louis. I'm John Miller with Joe Morgan. 13 years of the Johnny and Joe show. Just to let you know the Hall of Fame flow. Get ready when you hear Miller and Morgan speak. Get your right it's the Sunday night baseball game of the week. The big game between the lines of pastime. No quarters, no clock, no halftime. We're going now. From St. Louis, Nextel presents ESPN Sunday Night Baseball. The Mets with 11-game winner Pedro Astacio take on the Cardinals and 17-year veteran Chuck Finley. The Mets and Cards. Finley up against Piazza when we come back on the Sunday Night Baseball Game of the Week. ESPN Sunday Night Baseball Game of the Week, presented by Nextel. Nextel, how business gets done. And in part by the American Plastics Council. Plastics make it possible. By Budweiser, delivering beer at its best, with a crisp, clean, and refreshing taste known only to the king of beers. And by Office Depot, what you need, what you need to know. Now, in their 13th season as hosts of the Sunday Night Game of the Week, John Miller and Joe Morgan. The New York Mets still with wild card aspirations. The St. Louis Cardinals atop the National League Central. The rubber match of a three-game series. And we want to remind you now that you can log on to ESPN.com and play along with tonight's game with ESPN's new interactive baseball game. It's available live right now at ESPN.com. Let's take a look now at the Next tell, batting order for the New York Mets. It will be Roger Cedeno in left and Timo Perez in center. Mike Piazza, the catcher, Mo Vaughn at first. Roberto Alomar hitting fifth at second. Ty Wigginson in place of the injured Alfonso at third. Joe McEwing in right. Ray Ordonez at short and Anastasio the pitcher. Hello, everyone. I'm John Miller with Joe Morgan. Welcome to Sunday Night Baseball. And for the Cardinals, these are lean times. They've lost eight of their last ten. You know about all the pitching problems, the injuries, all kinds of terrible things have happened to that staff. But it's been the offense lately that has really been struggling, Joe. Well, and that's true, John. I, Albert Pujols has been the only one that's been consistent. He's hitting over 300 with runners in scoring position, and so is Renteria. They've added Scott Rowland to this ball club. Rowland was the man in Philadelphia, but they do not expect him to be the guy here. Albert Pujols is the guy, so all Rowland has to do is just get started a little bit and break that 6 for 41 slump that he's in. Albert Pujols in left field. He'll be hitting cleanup tonight. And there's Chuck Finley, 17 years of big leaguer, 2-2 two two here with the Cardinals. However, he has lost his last two decisions and really got lit up earlier this week uh, by the Montreal Expos. So he's trying to come back from that. And you see he's got a, a wide repertoire of pitches. It's that splitter, I think, that he's most known for. But he comes in with a good fastball, swung on and missed by Roger Cedeno. So we're underway here, and Finley comes... Uh, out smoking right out of the chute. Rogers today, no hitting 260. Just off the outside corner. Well, the Mets have the worst average against left handed pitching than any other team in the league, so left handers usually pitch very well against the Mets and hold them down. And that's a called strike. One ball and two strikes now to Cedeno. This has been a, a disappointing year for the Mets. Their record right at 500 at the moment. And uh, the only race that they're even on the periphery of is that wild card race. And down on strikes is Roger Cedeno. Great pitch there by Finley. That's that splitter we're talking about. Let's take a look at the defense behind him. Scott Rowland is the new addition at third base. And he is quite a third baseman. He's a really fine defensive third baseman. And he's played great defensively. He just has not hit since he's been here. A very refreshing 82 degrees at Bush Stadium tonight as we see Scott Rowland. 
Over at third base, playing shallow for Timo Perez, a very fast left-handed hitter, but he gets this one airborne into left center. Pujols going back. And right at the edge of the warning track for out number two. Two quick outs, and now the Mets' power comes up. Mike Piazza. And, John, one of the things that the Mets did, they dropped Roberto Alomar down in the lineup. And actually, I like that because he's not running as well as usual because of a groin injury, but he's also a good RBI man. I mean, he can drive in some runs for you, so you move him down in the lineup, and he may be able to drive in, help you drive in some runs here in this ballgame. Piazza, 283 average, 23 homers, and the fastball is off the outside. Now, Finley, a longtime American leaguer, but he did face the Mets earlier this year in an interleague game while he was with Cleveland. You see the shift is on for Piazza. That's the second baseman over behind second base. And that's a ball too low. 2-0 two oh now to Mike Piazza. The only infielder on the right side is Tino Martinez, the first baseman. And if you're Chuck Finley, you have to be very careful the entire ball game with Mike Piazza because Mo Vaughn is hitting behind him and you've been able to handle Mo pretty well. Good fastball to the inside. Well, you mentioned, Joe, the Mets as a team have been miserable against left-handed yeah. pitching, the worst in the league. But Mo Vaughn has always been a guy who's hit well against lefties. But he's never hit a home run against Chuck Finley. And he's faced him a lot of time. Finley is awfully tough for a lefty to hit a home run against. Vaughn or otherwise, he has not allowed a home run to a left-handed hitter for nearly two seasons. Three and one the count. Piazza hits that one hard, but wow, that one had some weird action on it and really <laughs> fooled Albert Pujols. It looked like it hit an invisible screen out there or something. Well, what it was, John, was a knuckleball. And when you, uh, when a guy hits a knuckleball out there, the seams might turn one way and the ball just automatically jumps the other way. And it looked like he was going to be able to make a play on it and then it jumped away from him. Let's take a look at this pitch up and in in the strike zone. And the ball's hit like a bullet. And you'll watch the, all of a sudden, look at that. It just drops down. That's, a, that's what's called hitting a knuckleball to the outfielder. Here's Mo Vaughn now with Piazza at second with a double. That's a strike call to the inside. And Mo with a quick look back at Angel Hernandez, the home plate umpire. Mo with 19 homers, 57 RBIs. Now, those are not big numbers by Mo Vaughn standards, but compared to where he was, what, six weeks ago, those are, uh, those are pretty good. He was off to the worst start of his life this year after missing all of last year. Back on the inside again, strike two. Good fastball in under the hands. Let's take a look and watch the flight of the ball. You see Pujols going over for it, and all of a sudden it's not there. It just sails off to the right. It may look like he misplayed that ball, but when the outfielder gets a knuckleball hit at him, he doesn't know where it's going to end up, and that's what that was. Now, if the pitcher had thrown one that moved like that, <laughs> I think they'd have to toss him out of the game for throwing an illegal pitch, Joe. Move on. Again, working to the inside, but too far in this time. One and two. Kind of interesting. He threw him two pitches inside. The, last, the second strike was a good fastball on the inside corner. I think that was a splitter, but he has not showed him anything away. I think you still have to, even if you believe that you can get him out inside, you still have to show a good hitter like Mo something away every once in a while. One ball, two strikes. Piazza at second. Vaughn trying to pick him up. And a high, lazy fly into left field. Pujols with no trouble on this one. So, one hit for the Mets. Now the Cardinals are coming up against Estacio, Vina, Drew, and Edmonds when we come back. Peanuts, popcorn, cotton candy, wow. a whole barrel full of cotton candy. Wow. No score. Here's the next up batting order now for the hometown nine, the Cardinals. Fernando Vigna in second. J.D. Drew in the number two spot in right field. Jim Edmonds in center field. Albert Pujols, the one Cardinal hitter who's not really in a deep slump right now in left field. Scott Rowland at third base. Tino Martinez at first hitting sixth. Edgar Renteria at short. Mike Mathena, the catcher, has had some success against... Pedro Stasio and Finley, the pitcher, hitting ninth. Pedro Stasio, an 11-game winner for the Mets this year. And he'd been one of the steadiest pitchers in the league, Joe. Look at that 2.95 earned run average. 
146 innings, only 126 hits. I mean, he has been an excellent starter for the Mets. And let's take a look at his pitches that he throws. Four seam fastball, that's the riding fastball, a curveball, a sinker. And he has a variety of change ups that he throws. There's his number one change. Almost a circle change. Well, the circle change is number three, but it's not really a circle change. He just grabs them a lot of different ways. It's almost like a, uh, a splitter circle change. Yeah, but it works that. for him. That's the point. He says he throws that latter one, number three, there when he wants to strike out. Here is Fernando Vina, 272 average. Vina, who has been hit by pitches 13 times this year. There was some uh, controversy about that yesterday in St. Louis. There's ball one. One ball and no strikes. The, uh, Mets felt that he did not try to get out of the way. You see, he's second in the National League in that category. It's hit a lot. Fernando swings away, and this time he puts the hit on Pedro Astacio. It's a double for Vina, and that is the first time in the last four starts that anybody has hit an extra base hit against Astacio. Well, he got the fastball up. The ball was up in the strike zone, and you'll see it's up. And Vina just rips it down the right field line. And once he hits it down the line, it's going to be an automatic double. They're not going to be able to stop him. Let's take a look at the defense. And this is not a good defense, even though you have a gold glove winner here, a gold glove winner there. The Mets were the first team to reach 100 errors this season, and their defense has just not been consistent. Now J.D. Drew to try and get Vigneault over to third at least. And he bunts at it and misses. Strike one. Drew has been in a slump. Well, I, and I guess that's why he tried to bunt there. But when you have a guy like J.D. Drew who can hit the ball out of the ballpark, pulling the ball against Pedro Estacio should not be that big a deal. I mean, you pull the ball to the right side, you accomplish what you want, and you also give yourself a chance of getting a base hit to drive him in. Sacrifice, you're just giving up an out. Yeah, at the very least, he needs yeah. to get him to third base, but even better yet, get him home. Right, so go ahead and hit, because he should be able to pull the ball. Of course, Placido Polanco used to be the regular number two hitter in the order for the Cardinals. And he definitely would get him over. Well, J.D.'s having a hard time even getting bat on ball here trying to bunt. 0-2. Oh, Having seen those last two pitches, Joe, I firmly believe that he should just swing away and forget about sacrificing ever again. Well, I think he's going to have to swing now. Cardinals, of course, have been struggling to score runs. They scored five here yesterday, but four of those on one swing of Albert Pujols' bat. Lays off that high fastball from Astacio. One ball and two strikes. I mean, the, the norm for them lately is getting one run or none. They had a, a six-game stretch before yesterday. In five of those games, they got either one or no runs. Jim Edmonds on deck. And it's hard to figure with this many fine veteran hitters as they have in this lineup. They're all in a slump at the same time. And that breaking ball misses low. Two and two. Last week, John, when I was trying to tell you that Placido Polanco did well in these types of situations, you wouldn't let me say that. <laughs> <laughs> you kept cutting me off. <laughs> well, it, it was it was obvious that he did well in those yeah, situations. Yeah, he did. He was. Yeah. Any other things about last week's telecast that you want to no, get I, off your mind? I, it was it was good. I was back. I was you know I I should have expected that. All right, so now that you've gotten that sort of uh, off your mind, we can start with a clean slate it's for tonight? clean slate. Okay, from here on, clean slate. All right. Well, he's worked the count to three and two, so maybe he knew what he was doing. Yeah. He intentionally missed those two bunts. <laughs> Not. Three and two, the count to Drew. Vigna at second, nobody out. Now, Pedro Astacio... We mentioned he had not given up an extra base hit, no doubles, triples, or homers in any of his last three starts. There are only two other pitchers this year in all of Major League Baseball who had similar streaks, Barry Zito and Pedro Martinez, two of the best in the American League. Oh, man. That's one of the, that's a variety, one of those off-speed pitches that he throws, and you just had to know that he was going to throw it because he needed a strikeout. Yeah. 
That's a curveball. And it's a beautiful curveball at that. You see the rotation there down and in on J.D. Drew. That's beautiful rotation. Were those passes that you left? No, not today. I didn't leave any today. Because I was thinking, gee, I don't know those people. They must be with Joe. <laughs> no, I didn't leave any pass. Now Jim Edmonds to try to pick up his teammate, J.D. Drew, who failed to get Vigneault over to third base. And there's that sinking fastball that comes back in over the plate for a called strike. Edmonds is hitting 313, 23 homers, 62 runs batted in. Johnny's only hitting 227 with runners in scoring position, and he's one of the guys that the Cardinals have always counted on to get the job done. There are only two guys on the Cardinals who are doing really well in those situations. Albert Pujols is hitting over 300, and Edgar Renteria is hitting 390 with runners in scoring position. So that's part of their problem right there. Albert's hitting 312. 355, I'm sorry, that's Renteria hitting 355. He's with men in scoring position. Men, yeah, yeah. And, and everyone else is in the twos and not doing that well. Nice ball. And it is 0 2. Now, Edmonds has only two hits in his last 24 at bats. Now, Roland being in a slump has been well documented because he's the, the high profile guy acquired in the trade, but it's the whole team. I mean, right. Edmonds, two for 24. J.D. Drew uh, was in such a slump that he got dropped down to the eighth spot of the order here yesterday. Gino Martinez has not had an RBI this month. Okay, now was there, was there a purpose to that pitch? No, what happened there is Edmonds knows that Estacio has a great changeup, so he's waiting just a little longer, and then, you know, that's a fastball. It's not a changeup, and when a guy throws a changeup, you have to wait a little longer before you commit yourself. Back on the inside, strike three called with a fastball. And he stayed with the hard stuff on Edmonds after getting Drew with the curveball. Well, if you have a great changeup or any great pitch, with two strikes, the hitter's always going to have that in the back of his mind. So what do you do? You throw him all hard stuff while he's looking for something off speed, and you'll get him every time. I mean, that's the problem. If you have a great curveball, the hitter's automatically going to look for it with two strikes. Two down. You see, that's the, the typical look of Pedro Stasio when he's looking in for a sign with a man on base. Albert Pujols with the man on its second. That's Vigna. And he curves in for a strike. Astacio will bend over at the waist, ball and glove, and that right arm will dangle. And he kind of kind of shakes it as if it, as if something's not quite right, but he does it before every pitch. Well, what he's doing is relaxing his arm, John. You know, as a pitcher, a lot of tension builds up in your body out there when you're standing there, especially under pressure with a runner at second base or a runner on base. So he just relaxes himself, relaxes his arm. Look at that pitch. Movement. Looked, started off the outside and drifted back over the plate at 91 miles per hour. All into the count. To Albert Pujols from Mass Cam, we get a look at it. See that ball clearly moved back over the plate. Let's see Piazza. And we appreciate Mike's agreeing to wear Mass Cam tonight to put us right down in the middle of the action. And you can see his his glove moving back following the pitch setting up on the outside and the curveball and the inning is over wow he gives up a double and then strikes out the side coming up Chuck Finley will describe his split finger pitch that most feared of pitches from major league hitters no score after one and this is the one that's kept me in the league for so long <laughs> Chuck Finley went to, ready to work now to Roberto Alomar. As we start the second inning, no score. Ty Wigginton, the rookie on deck. And it's just off the outside. One ball and no strikes. And John Alomar had been struggling the entire year with, you know, from the right side. But now he really has a, a problem because his left groin is injured. And that's the what you rotate on your left side when you're 
hitting right handed you see him kind of shaking it out there he uh, he actually missed some games because of it where he couldn't hit right handed but I was talking to him before the game and he said hey you know we've got to do it now or we're out of this thing so he's playing today one ball one strike and the curveball from Finley in there for a called strike well Stasha's got the great hook but Finley's isn't too bad either well, the great unusual thing, John, about these two pitchers is that they both throw a variety of change-ups, not just this one change-up. Check swing and a foul on that fastball. Chuck Finley, 17 years in the big leagues. I remember when we first started Sunday Night Baseball, he was a veteran then, 1990, with the Angels. Off the outside. Two balls, two strikes. He was in that rotation at one point with... Mark Langston and Jim Abbott. As we've always said, or I have anyway, that any time a left-handed pitcher can throw strikes, he can usually stick around. If he has good stuff, he can be one of his top pitchers. Well, uh, you've always said that. Yeah. I started saying it after I heard you always say it. <laughs> so in that way, we've we we have always we've said, said yeah. that. Yeah. Three and two, the count. I want to fight it off. Still three and two. One of the things that happens when you have a, if, if it was his right groin and he's hitting right handed, you can come off his foot leg. But see, once he plants this leg and drives around it, I mean, I mean, there's nothing. You're going to injure, re injure your leg every time you swing. Because you plant on it. Well, he cooks as a walk from Finley. In our baseball notebook brought to you by Nextel, we revisit an old favorite, Mark McGuire, on his hitting. Uh, we we'll have that a bit later, but right now, Chuck Finley about his uh, split finger patch. Uh, next, uh, your direct connection with the best players. I can throw this for strikes, and I also can throw it for an out pitch. So what makes this effective is I can do two or three things with it. And people say, well, it must be a straight change. I go, no, it's my split, but it's just a variation of most guys' changes like this. All I'm doing is moving my finger over doing that because I never could get the feel for that pitch. I just couldn't get it in my glove right. And that makes it three times as effective because he throws it like three different ways and he gets three different types of movement off of it as well as getting you with the speed change. But he has, he, he, as we mentioned last week, he was working with Andy Bennis on throwing that split change and it seems to have really helped Andy Bennis as well. Ty Wigginton is the hitter. Nobody out. Alomar at first. And is that uh, change up? The problem is you don't know when to call it a splitter or when it's a change. I mean, it's, he says it, it acts the same way, except when he puts pressure on one part of the. That looks more like a change. But it's very difficult to tell, and that's what makes it such a good pitch. If you're at the plate, you can't tell what it is. Joe McEwing on deck. That's off the outside. Now, Wigginton is 24 years old, born in uh, San Diego, grew up down there. It was a 17th round draft choice for the Mets in 1998. He's been in their minor league system until just recently. And in 13 games of the big league level this year, he's hit 400. He's playing in the absence of Edgardo Alfonso, who had to be placed on the disabled list. Look down. Two balls, two strikes. Wigginton playing in place of Alfonso. It's funny because the Mets have been so poor against left-handed pitching as a team. The one guy in their lineup who's really hit the lefties well is Edgardo Alfonso. And he's missing. He's on the DL. And he had really started to hit with some power. You know, he was starting to produce better. He'd been hitting 300 most of the season. He was really starting to drive the ball. Alomar first base Alomar uh, I asked him about his bunting game he says I don't bunt right now <laughs> he said well why not he says, he says well I, I, I can't run I'm, I'm an old man now you get that groin injury hampers him a little bit ordinarily you'd think of him as a big stone base threat right here we can see drills at the center Edmonds he's going to throw back into first base but Alomar back in time One away. Well, here's the last pitch. 
And there's that split change that he's talking about. You see his fingers are split on it. And there it is. Not only is it like a splitter that goes down, it's a change up as well. Out of our first one out here is Joe McEwing. McEwing, who came along in 1998 here in St. Louis, the year that Mark McGuire was the, the talk of all baseball with his 70 home run season. Big Mac. And McEwing became a, a, a very useful player that year. He could play the infield, the outfield, he hit well. So they started calling him Little Mac. Yeah. They still have Big Mac land out there. But uh, I don't think they get as many souvenirs as they used to. <laughs> no. Mark McGuire. And back to the bag again is Alomar. No score here. We're in the second inning. New York Mets at the start of the day in the National League wild card race. And we, we keep mentioning that in reference to the Mets because they're 18 and a half games out of first right now in their Eastern Division race. I'm thinking, Joe, that race is over. For the Mets. And for just about everybody yeah, else, Mon Montreal lost today. They're, I mean, the Mets are 18 and a half out and they're in second place. Montreal lost today. They're 19 games out. Hey, uh, nice shirt. Oh, thank you, man. It's a little thing you on. Looking good. Thank you. Yeah. Like what you did with your hair. <laughs> <laughs> Two and oh, the count to Joe McEwing. It's a foul, and that got the plate umpire, Angel Hernandez. Two balls and a strike now. So in that wild card race, the Mets, even there, are just sort of hanging on, just by in <laughs> desperation. Seven and a half games out of the wild card race, and several teams between them and first place in that race. The Dodgers, who are playing right now, by the way, in L.A., will keep you uh, up to date on what's going on there. The Giants won today in San Francisco, a game out at the moment, then Cincinnati, Houston. Both of them are closer in the central division race than in the wild card race. Then the Mets, seven and a half out. That's one of those things. I mean, it looks like a long shot. On the other hand, you know, then go out and have one of those uh, you know, 15 and three streaks for three weeks. All of a sudden, they become a player in that. The problem is, as you mentioned, they just have so many teams in front of them. That's what makes it difficult. If you're seven games behind, say, one team or two, you have a, a big chance. But seven and a half with three or four teams in between is very difficult to make up. It's sharply but foul. Two and two to McEwing. There's Mo Vaughn. Now, he was one of the Mets. Off, I mean, when, they, when the season started, nobody was hitting. Alomar was in a slump. Alfonso wasn't hitting homers. Mo was in a slump. He went on the disabled list for a time. And Piazza who was supposed to be surrounded by sluggers. It was supposed to be his easiest season as a man. Taking days off whenever he needed it, but he was the only guy. And those days off, he couldn't take them very often. Then he's going to have to hurry. Chief! I think that surprised Finley. Well, it did. He didn't react very quickly. I mean, he, uh, he looked like he thought it was hit back to him. And then he realized that he had to pounce off the mound and go after it. I watch him, he just stands there for a split second. See right there? Now he realizes it's not coming all the way out. And by the time he gets the ball to first base, Joe McEwing is beating it out for a base hit. And that second that he hesitated was the difference. Right, big difference. Because if he would have come off the mound quickly, I think he would have had a shot at throwing McEwing out. So the Mets have two men on with one man out. A, uh, a fluky kind of a hit there by Joe McEwing. But he'll take it. He needs it. He came into the game hitting 188. Here is Ray Ordonez. L.A., by the way, we mentioned that wild card race. They have gone ahead of the Philadelphia Phillies one to nothing after one on a Marquise Grissom home run. Grissom's had a big weekend. Dodgers have been playing real well lately. They've been coming from behind. Their offense has been 
producing. Ordonez takes inside. Two balls and no strikes. Ordonez is hitting 245. One homer, 35 driven in. However, and then in square position, he's hitting 261. A little bit better. I mean, he's got to get a hit every once in a while or he wouldn't have any RBIs at all. I mean, 35 RBIs hitting eight. That's pretty good. One of the things that I noticed today about him, and, you know, he, he's obviously known for his glove. He takes batting practice with the first group, which allows him to take the rest of the day just working on ground balls and catching ground balls. And a lot of times you, you go out and catch a few ground balls, then you come in and hit with your group. Well, he does it just the opposite. He, he takes most of the time out in the field. He rarely walks. But he gets the walk here, a four-pitch walk, no less. Only the 15th time this year that he has walked in 372 plate appearances. So with one out, the bases are loaded, and Pedro Astacio comes up. Trying to help himself here. Matt Galante, the third base coach, talking to Alomar. There's Renteria alongside McEwing at second. And Mookie Wilson, the Mookster, is uh, alongside Ordonez, who just walked. So here is Estacio, seven for 49, with one run batted in. Now, Joe, I mean, he, it seemed to me if he hits the ball, he could be a real double play threat. Definitely. I'm telling what are you him. Suggesting? I'm telling strike him. Out? To, yeah, I want him to strike out. Yeah, I. Or squeeze. Time taken. There are s some managers that believe that. You know, you do not want him to go up there and put the ball in play, hit a ground ball, and the inning's over. You'd rather have him strike out and allow your leadoff hitter a chance to hit with the bases loaded. I mean, you do not tell him that, but that's some of the things that could happen. Well, he slaps that one foul to get into the seats in a hurry off the first base side. Well, there, he looks like a hitter. What do you think? I mean, he's a little late on the pitch. Well, right, that's to Daniel Ande. That's not unusual. Pitchers being a little late on a good fastball. I mean, he was he was way late on it. <laughs> oh, and won the count. Oh, there's that splitter. Oh, and two. That was the one with the real the downer type movement. John, I think I was just looking at his bat there and it said for display purposes only. <laughs> I'm not sure. There's that splitter we we're talking about with the change up motion. Oh, and two to Estacio. And he goes after another one that's in the dirt for the strikeout. And again, that's not the worst thing that could have happened. Obviously, you would like for him to put the ball in play, get a base hit, but the last thing you want him to do is hit into a double play. And he just decided, Finley decided, well, I'm, he swung at the last one like he didn't know what he was doing. Let's try it again. And this one is even worse, but he gets the job done. Well, over the years, Finley has struck out a lot of better hitters than Pedro Astacio with that pitch. Correct. Now here is Cedeno. Roger with 30 RBIs for the year. Bases loaded, two down. Into the hole. Renteria. The second in time to get Ordonez. Vina covering. The Mets leave him loaded. Scott Rowland coming up. Then Tito Martinez when we come back. Hi, everybody. Bill Pito in the studio. For those of you who are watching the tennis before we went to the baseball game, it is over. Masters Series from Cincinnati. Carlos Moya against the number one ranked player in the world, Leighton Hewitt. Championship point right there. Moya wins it. Won the first set 7-5, the second set 7-6. Seven, 7-5, seven, the score in the tiebreaker. You can watch the match ESPN2 tonight at 10.30 p.m. Eastern Time. John, back to you. Thanks, Bill. So an upset in that uh, tennis tournament. A little rain delay. There's a guy who remembers Stan the Man, Stan Musial. One of the best who ever played the game. Played right here in St. Louis. More base hits than any other player until at least in National League history, until Pete Rose came along. Stand the man, number six. There, along with some of the other Cardinal greats, Dizzy Dean, Ozzie Smith, Bob Gibson, Rogers Hornsby, Red Shandings, Ken Boyer, Enos Slaughter, 
That's a base hit for Scott Rowland. And he needed it. Two for his last 32. Well, he had been in the six for 41 streak. That's a mistake. Up and over the plate a little bit. Gets a lot of the plate. And right handed hitters by nature are pretty good high ball hitters. Although the last few years they've also become pretty good low ball hitters. So Roland is aboard. And here is Tino Martinez. Again, Tino has not had an RBI in the month of August. No score, last of the second. A little bit low, one ball and no strikes. Pedro Stasio, as you see Tino's numbers for the year, only 13 homers, 53 batted in. He was the Yankees' big home run hitter last year. They got to yet another World Series. Back to the bag is Roland. Roland is a big guy with, with power, but has six steals for the year. Hold on on the bag with him. Estacio has made 22 starts this year and has given up four runs or less in all of them. Alomar, nice play. Gets Roland. Nice play by Roberto Alomar. The easy play obviously would have been to take the out at first base, but instead you take you you know keep the double play in order and keep the guy from getting in the scoring position and this is a tough play because remember he's got a sore groin and so watch him he gets over there normally he just make this play easily but see he gets down on it and then turns and fires a strike to Ray Ordonez nice play and on that shot you saw Roland had to stop on his way to let that ball go by him to avoid being hit and that's well, Adamar was able to turn that into a, his advantage. That's a base hit for Renteria. You yeah. know, Martinez over to second. And in theory, that play by Alomar saves the run. He but, may not have been able to score because of the ground ball through the hole, but if he would have allowed Roland to get to second base, he would have already been in scoring position. Well, Renteria has been swinging the bat exceptionally well. Not a bad pitch. The sinker going in a little bit. And he grounds it in the hole for a base hit. Edgar Renteria, no surprise there. He has been hot. One of only four shortstops in the majors hitting 300 right now. The other three are all in the American League. Nomar garcia Parra, Alex Rodriguez, and Miguel Tejada. Derek Jeter hitting 298. So Renteria singles. Martinez takes second. Mike Matheny. Now Matheny, he hadn't had that many at-bats against Estacio, and he wasn't that happy about that call. But he's had success against him. Seven hits and 11 career at-bats. Including a home run. Look at that. That's pretty good. I mean, even the fact that it's not a lot of at-bats to have something that outstanding as far as seven hits and 11 at-bats tells you that you see the ball well off of this pitcher. Dan with the uh, breaking ball. That one knocked down by Piazza. The runners have to hold. One ball, one strike. Finley, the pitcher, is on deck. There is Tino Martinez, who hit into the force play. And then Edgar Renteria, who singled. But Joe, you mentioned about Alomar's play that may have saved a run here. You know, if he was a basketball player, you would say he has great court vision. Correct. And there's, there's almost nothing in the field that's going on that he isn't aware of, that he doesn't make note of. Well, he noticed that, you know, as you mentioned, Roland had to slow down, so he knew that he would have a chance at second base. And a count now, two and one. The Cardinals with men in scoring position again. And their leadoff man in the first inning being a double. So they had a lot of chances already where a base hit could have meant a run against Estacio. Same thing with the Mets. Both teams have had men in scoring position in each inning of this game. Roland started this with a single, then got forced down. That's down the line. Nice pickup. Here's the long throw. Ty Wigginson not even close there to getting Matheny, and the bases are loaded. 
Meanwhile, here's an update from Dodger Stadium with Bill Pito. All right, John, Dodgers trying to make it five wins in a row. That would tie a season high. Taking on the Phillies, Marlon Anderson here to Mark Ruiz Atlantic, and uh, he bobbles it. And then throw gets away, run scores, and the Phillies now lead it 2-1. That broke the tie, 2-1 bottom second. All right, thanks, Bill. One to one there. In fact, uh, two to one there. Philly leading L.A. Well, this is a tough play right over the bag and actually hits in fair territory, although it doesn't have to once it goes over the bag. But a nice stop, but no chance for a throw to first base. He's well off balance. Winnington was, Wigginton was just making a throw to make a throw. So now Finley's up. So this is the same spot that the Mets had. Bases loaded, one out, but their pitcher up. And Finley, of course, has spent his entire career in the American League. He has rarely batted. He's showing bunt, but it was not the suicide squeeze. And, th and that's interesting. And that's what I was thinking when you were talking about Astacio. Try to safety squeeze. If he gets it in a good spot, you may be able to score the runner. If you do not and they force out the plate, maybe you stay out of the double play anyway. You're just, you know, you're trying to do something. I think this is a good move to try to bunt. Make sure you do not bunt it back to the pitcher. That's the, the main thing. Yeah, see that? Oh, Vaughn boots it. Everybody's safe and a run scores. And that's why you do it. You just want to put the ball in play and force them to make a play. You just want to make sure you do not bunt it back to the pitcher. Not a difficult play. Mo just doesn't make the play. I mean, this is that he's well, he's in. I don't know exactly why he missed it. He was there in plenty of time and didn't make the play. But this is a good play by Finley and a good play by the Cardinals. Just put the ball in play. It's kind of a safety squeeze. Force them to make make a play. And you get the job done. Instead I mean, of just standing there striking out, as you suggested. <laughs> <laughs> Here's Fernando Vina and a curveball for a strike. So now the Cardinals have a chance at a big inning here. Well, that's a sacrifice they're calling it, an RBI for Finley and an error, of course, on Mo Vaughn. But it seems, I mean, it's clear to me that what happened was Mo, although he had plenty of time, tried to rush the play to get that lead runner at home. Right. Well, you put the pressure on the defense. Anytime you put the ball in play, you force the defense to have to make a play. Third ball in the dirt. Piazza knocks it down. One ball, one strike. Vigna doubled his first time. Base is loaded. One out. Well, the error by Mo Vaughn. Fernando Vigna's mom, Olga Vigna, is watching the telecast tonight in Sacramento, California. And Fernando asked us if we could remember him to his mom because yesterday was her birthday. Exactly. And his son Jordan is also listening. But mom's birthday was yesterday, so that's who we'll remember. Felicidades, Senora Viña. Left field. Cedeno does not have a real strong arm. And Renteria scores easily. 2 nothing Cardinals. Savinia produces, getting that runner home from third with less than two down. Well, again, the ball is up, and Vinya does a good job of getting it to the outfield, staying out of the double play situation, keeping the ball off the ground. Now J.D. Drew he struck out his first time. As the curve stays too high, one ball, no strikes. And, you know, back to the, the bunt by Chuck Finley. The one thing you know if you're Tony La Russa and the Cardinals, the Mets make a lot of errors. So you want to make them have to make plays. And that's what happened there. You force them to make a play, and they can't make it. That is foul. One ball, one strike. Well, I mean, you had just mentioned that the Mets defensively had been lacking this year. It is really 
plagued them all season long. Their 100th first error. And although they're saying that first run, they're giving them an RBI and whatnot. I mean, it was clear that Mo Vaughn was going to throw to the plate and get the guy out. And having done that, probably this inning would have been over right now with nobody scoring. Correct. Because I'm a little surprised that they gave him an RBI on the play because Mo was already in. Charge the ball. If he gets it, you're going to force the guy out at the plate easily. I mean, if you make the play. Drew got a hit by that pitch. Although I think he maybe had hit off part of his shirt, not so much Drew himself. And now Charlie Huff, the Mets pitching coach, is going to go to the mound. Well, remember the ball doesn't have to hit your body. It doesn't look like it touches him there. But it doesn't have to hit your body. All it has to do is touch any part of your uniform. There you go. Got his, uh, yeah. got the shirt dangling from his chest. And that's all it has to do is touch any part of your uniform. That's pretty good uh, camera work, by the way. Yeah, so the ba bases are loaded again. Matheny, Finley, and Drew with Jim Edmonds coming up. And the one thing you do not want to do, although Jim Edmonds now has struck out 90 times on the season, you can't continue to put him up in these positions and expect to get him out all the time. Because he is a good hitter. Edmonds, one hit, eight at bats, lifetime against Astacio. Three men on, two men out, two runs already in. Right center field, but there is McEwen. Two runs, though, when we come back. New Hall of Famer, Ozzie Smith, the Wizard, will join us in the booth. The ESPN Sunday Night Baseball Game of the Week, presented by Nextel. Nextel, how business gets done. And in part by Capital One, who asks, what's in your wallet? Bush Stadium in St. Louis, Sunday night baseball. The Cardinals two, the Mets nothing. Into the third inning now. And the Wizard, number one, Ozzie Smith, the latest Cardinal to be inducted into the Hall of Fame. And tonight, before the game here, just outside Bush Stadium, they had another ceremony as they unveiled a, a statue of Ozzie doing what he did best for so many years, maybe better than anybody has ever done at shortstop in the history of the game. Timo Perez, the hitter against Chuck Finley and that is under the glove of Scott Rowland and down the left field line Perez has lots of speed and he's going to uh, go for it the throw by two holes he slides he's out Well, uh, Joe, let's bring in Ozzy to tell us what he thought of that play by uh, Albert Pujols. Ozzy, what do you think? You know, he made that play the only way that he could and um, you know, Perez, I it looks like he may have hesitated a little bit here as that ball gets by Scott Rowland there. But Albert Pujols, for a guy who has never played the outfield, did a great job of barehanding the ball and throwing on the run right there, and pretty good throw. He may have been in it if he had, hadn't slid past the bag. There. Well, that's the problem. He made a slide avoiding the tag and missed and slid off the bag. I think that's one of those situations where you go straight in, and he probably would have been safe. Mike Piazza, the hitter now, so Perez is out. And the Mets down by two with one out. Nobody on for the big slugger, Mike Piazza. And it's a foul out of play. Well, Ozzy, first off, I mean, we saw you with the Hall of Fame inductions a couple of weeks ago. But not tonight, a special ceremony outside of Bush Stadium here. I mean, they've got some statues of some all-time greats out there, <laughs> like Stan Musial and, and now Ozzy Smith. I tell you what, it's a... Uh... The last couple of weeks have just been, people don't realize that as great an event as it is, it, it is very taxing. Um, I think the anticipation, uh, I was always worried about whether or not the event itself would, would live up to the expectation. And um, there is, we see Lou Brock and Whitey and part of my family there. Uh, Stan Musial himself. And, and the statue, you know, these guys did a, did a great job because it's very hard for an artist to be able to capture um, to build a statue with someone in the air and you know Ooh, I think that was yeah. really uh, really kind of special with the way that uh, Harry Weber was able to do that I'm honored well congratulations again thank you very much 
Well, I was going to ask you a question. I mean, every time I see something, you're diving for a ball or you're doing <laughs> this or that. Could you hit? No. <laughs> I remember I you did, could hit a little bit. I, well, I did that. You got 2,500 hits, didn't you? I, I had 2,460 yeah. oh, hits. Oh, you should have stayed for the 40. Well, I was trying, but... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> didn't, That's okay. We didn't work out. Okay. <laughs> didn't work out, but, uh, you know, Joe, it's, it's one of those things that, as a, as a player, I don't think that any of us wanted to, wanted to be noted as a one-dimensional right. player, and I, I certainly was no different, you know? So I knew that it wasn't going to be easy, but there was no reason for me with the way that I play defense, not to be able to make myself a better offensive a player. And uh, I went to work at it, and once I started understanding what type of hitter I was going to be, then uh, it, it all came together for me. 1985 was really the year where the understanding and the application and the technique and all of those things really fell into place. Well, 2,400 hits, I mean, that puts you in the upper echelon of you know, of all the players that's ever played this game. So you're, you weren't just a one, to, you know, a defensive specialist. Of course, you stole bases and everything else. I, I have to tell you this. You still, the greatest play I ever saw by an infielder, you made, and it's the one that they show now mm -hmm. in your highlights when you made it against uh, Burr, Jeff How many Burrow. times did I do that? It seems like it's I've done it a million times, right? A million times. But when I saw it the first <laughs> time, I just couldn't believe it. I mean, I saw the highlights, you know, the That's year that you made it. The dime and the bare hand. It was, yeah, it, it was one of those plays that, you know, it, it just it just happens. Um, this particular play, I went to my left, and as I dove, the ball kind of went went back the other way, and I was able to barehand. Bare I mean, that's it. unbelievable. Look at that. I barehanded it and was able to scramble to my feet, and I think the most surprised person in the ballpark was probably Jeff Burrow. Yeah, well, I don't blame <laughs> him, <laughs> but I still think that's the greatest play I've ever seen because. You know, we all dive for balls, and you make the play, and you come up and you throw the guy out. But when you dive, you're in mid-dive, and the ball bounces the other way, and you barehand it. I mean, that was that was phenomenal to me. And I don't think I've ever seen a better play, you know, by an infield. I really don't. Well, thank you, Joe. You know, when I talk to people, I tell them the greatest asset that you can have, not only in sport but in life, is the ability to improvise. Right. And uh, having, having a play like that come about is just uh, one of those things that, it happened. I was in the right place at the right time. Yeah, but no one else could have done it. <laughs> <laughs> Ozzie Smith in the Hall of Fame. Now the statue outside of Bush Stadium. Keep on going. Thank you, John. Thank Ozzie you, Ozzie Smith. Thanks, Ozzie. We'll be back. Sunday night baseball from St. Louis. The Cardinals two, the Mets nothing. Last of the third inning. Here's the cleanup hitter, Albert Pujols, against Pedro Astacio. In the deep right center field. McEwing. Makes the catch and slams into the fence. Hangs on to it. Nice play, Super Joe. Looked like a changeup from Astacio, and Albert Pujols gave it a pretty long ride. So one thing about Pujols, he has such a good foundation when he strides and when he approaches the ball that change-ups, curve balls, nothing really bothers him. That ball toward the outside corner, and nice over-the-head catch by Joe McEwen. I like to... As Scott Rowland stands in, he singled his first time, and that curve is high and tight for ball one. I like Pujols. Says he, in his first at bat, he likes to see a few pitches. We're going to get a, a feel for the guy, what kind of movement he's got, how the different pitches he's going to feature. And he did that the first time, although he ended up striking out. This time, he's right up there right away. Yeah. Well, he's seen all the pitches, so now he just goes with his normal approach. The first at bat, you do not know how much movement the pitcher is going to have on his fastball or how quickly it gets there or how much movement he has on any other pitches. So that's why you like to watch him or see as many pitches as you can in the first at bat. Sharp breaking ball down and away. Scott Rowland with a two ball, two strike count. Two nothing. The Cardinals out in front here. Rowland. I mean, when he gets it going, he can hit home runs. I mean, he's a 25, 30 home run threat a year. Well, I think the good thing here, John, is that he's surrounded, you know, by players that they don't, you know, they do not expect him to have to do it all, have to carry the load. You know, in Philly, he was kind of the guy in the middle, although they had some good players there. Bobby Abreu, of course, drove in 100 runs, and Pat Burrell is going to do that. But it was still kind of Roland's team. Here he's just going to be one of the guys because this is basically Pujols Ed and Edmonds team. See the average year for him has been 26 homers, 95 driven in. There's Renteria on deck, and the curveball fouled right back to the screen. 
Renteria is in the hole, by the way. That's uh, Tino Martinez on deck. Renteria in the hole after Tino. Tino. And Tino's like, you know, Alomar. They're adjusting to the National League. You know, Tino has played in the American League most of his, you know, all of his career. And now he's in the American National League. And there is a difference, although there's not as big a difference now as there used to be. Years ago, it was the American League was an off-speed pitcher's league, all curveballs, and a high ball league. And the National League was more fastballs and sinkers. Now, uh, they're pretty much mixed up. They're pretty close to the same, but there's still a difference in the American League approach. And that will go back out of play again. Three and two the count. Well, both Alomar and Mo Vaughn coming from the American League to the National League this year. Alomar saying that he still is facing guys that he'd never seen before. Yesterday, Luther Hackman started. Alomar said he'd never seen him before. Three and two to Roland having a battle here with Estacio. And the curve, and he just did get a piece of that. Still three and two. Well, he's fought off some curve balls, fought off some tough fastballs on the outside. Roland started that two-run second inning rally with a single to the left, although he did not score a run. He ended up being forced out. The outfield plays him over toward the right field line a bit. Let's see how they're playing it. The uh, left fielder. So Daniel way over to left center. Three and two. This will be the tenth pitch of the advance. High and deep into left center. So Daniel back to the wall. And that's the first cardinal home run for Scott Rowland. Three nothing St. Louis. changes in this game is the more pitches you see in the, any one at bat, the better chance you have of getting a base hit. Well, they want Roland to take a bow. And here he comes. His 18th overall this year, but his first as a Cardinal. And it was in fact the tenth pitch of that at bat. And as Tony LaRusso says, all he needs to do is relax. He needs Scott Rowland to relax and everything will fall into place and nothing will relax you like a home run. Chino hits that one off of Stasio. Vaughn can't get to it. It's in the right field and Chino's aboard with a base hit. Come out and have a look now at Pedro Stasio. Well, here's a pitch to Roland. It was it looked like a little sinker, but he caught it before it got out of his range. Low pitch. And he hits it right out of the ballpark, left center field. And that's well over the left field wall. And he gets his curtain call. Well, Stasio into the watchful eye of Scott Lawrenson, the trainer, and Charlie Huff, the pitching coach. And Angel Hernandez. Seeing if he's going to be able to continue. Meanwhile, here's an update from L.A. with Bill Pito. Okay, John, we figure Mark Guzalanic's error leading to a run for Philly to put the Phillies up 2-1. But Guzalanic atoning, bottom of the second, way back his eighth of the year. Ties the game at two, and that's where we are right now in the bottom of the third from Los Angeles. Phillies have had a hard time holding on to a lead in that series. Two to two, last of the third there. We'll keep you updated on the goings on at Dodger Stadium. Here, three nothing, the Cardinals ahead. Martinez at first, Renteria the hitter. Renteria fueled that two run second inning rally with a single. Well, this ball hits him on, you can see it hits him on his right leg. But what you can't see is Mo Vaughn. He broke right toward first base. 
I guess he thought the ball was a ground ball up the middle and he could not reverse his momentum and get back to the ball. One ball, one strike to Renteria. Samoa was going the wrong way to begin with. Exactly. And he could not change and go backwards. Chino, the former Yankee first baseman, alongside the current Mets first baseman. Ordonez to Alomar one, over to first, not in time. And Renteria runs well. And but, yeah, but right there you can see that that, you know, groin is bothering Roberto Alomar. He just tried to get rid of it and use his arm strength. He didn't step into it or anything. Again, it's, you know, he has a sore left leg and that, the one you throw against when you make a throw. You throw against your body, your left side. Now watch, watch he doesn't come across his left side. See right there how he stays back? And again, that's because he has a sore leg. Watch this, see, he doesn't come this way and throw against it. See, he's actually falling backwards. And that, again, that's, and, and, and you know, that, and it brings up a good question, John. There goes Renteria. Piazza's throw on one hop, not in time. So what's that question, Joe? Well, the question is, when do you play if you're injured? Or how much do you play? As we see, Renteria had a great jump. Throw is low, but it's still not going to be in time. Piazza does not make a good throw, but I don't think he had a chance to get Renteria anyway. He had such a great jump. So now they're walking Matheny intentionally with first base open, and the pitcher coming up. Renteria with his 16th steal of the year. He leads the Cardinals in that category. And John, you know, uh, back to Alomar you know, playing, he doesn't have the range that he normally has. He's limited as far as hitting. And actually, I mean, do you actually play? But then I've heard, you know, guys saying, you know, 80% of Roberto Alomar may be better than 100% of somebody else I can put out there. So that's why you play. That was only ball three, by the way, to Matheny. Now it's ball four. <laughs> or is it? Yeah, that's ball four. And, and baseball is a tough enough to game to play when you're 100% healthy, and let alone when something's wrong with either your legs or your hands. You can't swing the bat if something's wrong with your hands, and you can't run if something's wrong with your legs. Those are the two most important parts of your body for this game. Chuck Finley. Two for seven as a hitter this year. Got credit for a sacrifice bunt with the bases loaded there in the second inning and an RBI. Now look where Moe is playing at first base, Joe. And he's back behind the runner, playing deep at first. I mean, if Finley pushed down the same bunt he pushed down the last time, he'd beat it out, wouldn't he? Correct. Then Fernando Vini hits a three-run double, turns into a big inning. Well, and that's correct. I'm, I'm a little surprised at the way the defense is playing him anyway. They are playing in at third. You see the third baseman's in, but Mo is way back over here. Got the knees for a strike. Two and one to Chuck Finley. I mean, with two outs, you're supposed to be trying to drive in the runner from second, but he's yeah, the but not, not the pitcher, right? The pitcher, anything he can do to extend the inning is, is what he's supposed to do. Finley had, it was almost comedic with the big difference coming to the National League as a pitcher. I mean, he has to bat. Right. Which he didn't have to do in the American League. He said he was at one of those hot, you know, 98 degree days here in St. Louis, trying to conserve his strength between innings. He's in, in the dugout and just think. God, I have a chance to sit in the dugout. They said, Chuck, get it back. <laughs> he says, again? I'm up again? <laughs> yeah, every two, three innings, that's the way it works, Chuck. Two and two the count. Edgar Renteria. Runner at second, and that is Mike Matheny, who was walked intentionally over at first. Matheny had an infield hit his first time. Three nothing. The Cardinals out in front. Alomar. 
And the inning is over. He had a curveball that time. Scott Rowland with his first home run as a member of the Cardinals. 3-0 St. Louis heading to the fourth. ESPN Sunday Night Baseball presented by Nextel. Tonight from Bush Stadium in St. Louis, the Cardinals and the Mets. The rubber match of a three-game series. I'm John Miller along with Joe Morgan, your Sunday night telecasters. And Chuck Finley throwing a cold strike to Roberto Alomar. Finley trying to get things headed back in the right direction now. He was a, a big acquisition for the Cardinals. The one starting pitcher they were able to uh, pick up in trade. They had uh, nothing but uh, trouble in terms of the starting pitching. Alomar retired on the throw by Vina. There is one away. Tomorrow on ESPN Monday Night Countdown, Tom Jackson, Sterling Sharp, Ron Jaworski, Chris Mortensen, and Stuart Scott will get the night started at 7 Eastern, 4 Pacific. Then at 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific, it'll be the Miami Dolphins and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. And tomorrow will be the first chance to see Ricky Williams as a Dolphin and John Gruden as he leads the Buccaneers. NFL preseason action tomorrow on ESPN. Is Ty Wigginton, and that's a curveball for a strike. But getting back to Finley, he won his first two starts, and uh, since then he's had two starts where he got knocked around, especially the last one, one of his worst of all time, earlier this week. Owing to the count, Finley went two and two thirds innings, gave up seven runs and seven hits against Montreal. Of course, Montreal. Now, we haven't seen Montreal this year, but that's a pretty interesting team. Very interesting team to watch. I watch a few of their games on TV, on pretty, satellite. But not on Sunday Night Baseball. No, uh, I would love to see Vladimir Guerrero and Jose Vidro and Bad Vlad hit another yeah. home run today. Yeah, some 32. Of and Vidro, there is the strikeout. Finley with his fourth punch out of the game. Wigginton gone. That looks like it's that split change up or something going down and away. You can see right there it's a splitter. And whether it's a change up or not, can't tell. Two down. There they are, Joe, our fans. Yeah, I, I saw my name. Where's your name? I only saw mine. Well, I saw the guy had J-O-E. <laughs> That's not you. That's John. There's well, Joe right there. Well, you're Get out of the way, man. You're looking at the wrong side of the screen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. oh, and the, a, a big K-Zone fan back there. Yeah. Well, I'm sure he's not an umpire then. He likes K-Zone. <laughs> <laughs> one ball, one strike to McEwing. And again, I mean, we don't use K-Zone to umpire. Correct. I mean, we use it simply as an instructional tool to uh, show you how a pitcher's working, how he works within the strike zone, out of the strike zone, moves it around the strike zone, up, down, that sort of thing. And how he changes speeds. Yeah. We don't want to umpire. No, no, not me. Well, I do. Not me. I, yeah, you I like do, them. but I don't, I don't like to umpire. I only like to umpire after I know what the call should have been. <laughs> it's a good strategy for me. One ball, two strikes to McEwing. Renteria. And that is the inning. So Finley has shut out the Mets through four innings. Top of the order, Vina, then Drew and Edmonds. 3 0 Cardinals. At Bush Stadium, Cardinals 3, Mets nothing. Last of the fourth inning. Some, uh, some young Cardinal fans. Serena Williams will be on the cover, is on the cover of ESPN, the magazine. So be sure and look for that on the newsstand. Here is Fernando Vina, who has doubled and hit a sacrifice fly. So Vina has been a big man for the Cardinals tonight against Pedro Stasio. He doubled leading off the game against Estacio. Estacio had not allowed any kind of an extra base hit in three previous starts. Savinia so took care of that right away, and then later Roland hit a home run. 
That's out of play. 0 and 2 the count. And the Mets, you know, last year was they were worse off than they are now. I mean, and even later into the season. And then they got a hot real late and actually made some uh, inroads on an Atlanta team that was not doing that well. The Mets finally fell back at the end. Going to the count. But now they've played 116 games. They're still at 500. And it's starting to get late for them to uh, to mount that hot streak. There they are, seven and a half out of the wild card. Hoping to get some help from the Phillies tonight, who are playing in Los Angeles. The Giants already won. Houston was beaten by Atlanta. Cincinnati won. Aaron Boone hit a game-winning home run. Aaron Boone is starting to hit the long ball now. Hit three homers in a game the other night. And a game winner today. One ball and two strikes to Vigna. That looked like that pitch almost hit Vigna. He, he didn't get out of the way. Let's take a look here. Let's see what happens here. I mean, it looked like it was inside. He doesn't move. He definitely didn't move there. He didn't even move his foot out of the way. Fastball just missing on the inside. Two and two. What are you trying to say? Well, I'm trying to say that, I mean, with two strikes, if you come close, he's going to let it hit him. And that's a good leadoff man will do that. Shadow center. Timo Perez. And that is one away. We're telling you about ESPN, the magazine, on newsstands right now. This is what to look for is Serena Williams. I'm nowhere near my peak. She's on the cover. Also inside, a story on Mark McGuire. Where is he? What's he doing since he retired from the Cardinals? Where in the world is Big Mac? ESPN, the magazine. Check it out now. I know where Big Mac is. Where? Having fun, hanging out in Southern California. Actually, I talked to Barry Weinberg, who's a very good friend of mine and, and a very close friend of McGuire's, and I guess they talk quite often, and he said Mac's having a good time, enjoying, his, enjoying life, and living in Southern California. J.D. True takes I, ball I, two. I know about right. Mac, so I'm going to, I'll buy it so I can, you know, read about Serena Williams. I don't know her that well. That's the spot where he hit number 61 to tie Maris and move past Ruth. Labor Day of 1998, a game that we covered on ESPN. We were here that day, weren't we? Or were we here? No, we yeah. were there for six. Well, we were. Here. 61. 61. 61. Yeah. Okay. I know you, uh, I, I, the memory's starting to go now. All the games are, I enjoy I still all the you. games. One is not more important than the other when I sit here behind this booth. Yeah. Behind 62, this. we did not cover. Oh, but it, that one wasn't any more important to me than the one, the one with the, we did cover. J.D. Drew deep in the center field. Perez racing back. He's there now and moving to his right and makes the catch. Back near the 402-foot marker out there. I don't know the wind knocked that one down or what, but it ended up being quite a ways from where Perez initially went back to. John Bush Stadium used to be a big ballpark. But the hitters today make it a small ballpark. Very rarely would anyone hit the ball out straight away center field. And this ball, you see how shallow Perez was playing. That's why he had such a long way to go. But he gets back in time and makes the catch. Now Jim Edmonds change up the ball one. Now, now it used to be deeper. It was 4-10 right. center field. Correct. It was and deeper all the way around. It was deeper all the way around. I mean, center field was a graveyard for home run hitters. I mean, guys would crush balls and they'd all get caught out on the warning track or in front of the wall out there. Now they put the, uh, the beautiful grass in. That's just brought in a little bit. It's a different kind of Cardinal baseball than it was then. I mean, Whitey Herzog got here in the early 80s. The Cardinals had some good talent, but they weren't beating anybody. And Whitey said, we got to take advantage of this yard. And he went with the speed game. And they went to the series in 82, beat the Brewers, went back in 85. They were beaten by the Royals in 85, 80s, 
Are you seven? The Minnesota beat him. Were you the Royals beat him, or was it a call at first base? <laughs> <laughs> the Cardinal fans will tell you the Royals didn't beat them. It was a I, call at first base. I thought you didn't want to umpire. I didn't. I'm just telling you what the, the talk is still going around town here. They still talk about it. Still here upset about it. Still upset about it here in St. Louis. They still had a chance though to get the third out. Oh, they did. You know, after so you, that, so you have to give them four outs. I mean, the, what is it like the, the the four or five guys who reach base after that? Yeah, but you still have to give them four outs. Bad calls happen. Oh, okay. Right? I've never heard you defend umpires before. But you are changing. <laughs> John Miller, the umpire's best friend, and I've been known that way for many, many years. One ball, one strike to count to Pujols, who apparently didn't like that call by. Angel Hernandez. Well, it was up. It's a little bit too high, thought uh, Albert Pujols, although he also was leaning back from it. K zone had it as over the inside corner. Two and one, Piazza keeping Edmonds at first base. Already 3 0, the Cardinals leading. And Albert Pujols, who has struck out and flied deep to right center. Trying to make something happen here. Stasio's walked a couple in this game. Keep in mind that Stasio has not given up more than four runs in any game that he has pitched this year. Well, John, truthfully, he should only have given up one run in this ball game. The yeah. one Scott Rowland hit out of the ballpark. The defense uh, betrayed him yeah. back in the second. Two and two. Albert seemed to uh, have second thoughts in mid swing that time. And that's something you do not see him do that often. He's usually a guy that stays and sees the ball and then attacks the ball. You know, I've always enjoyed the way that he really attacks the baseball. Scott rolling on deck. He would be next. Strike three called on the outside corner. So the Cardinals go down. On to the fifth inning now. Still 3-0 St. Louis. Lupito back in the studio, Aaron Boone. Three homers on Friday night, and then today, 7-7 against San Diego in the 12th with a man on. There it goes. Game winner, Cincy, now only a game and a half behind St. Louis. They win at 9-7. And the Braves and the Astros, as Gary Sheffield goes deep for the 21st time, Atlanta blows out Houston 13-3. Houston now two and a half games behind St. Louis. Man, that one made the train tracks, I think, out there in uh, Minute Maid Park. There's ball one to Ray Ordonez. Leading off here for the Mets in the fifth inning. Three nothing. The Cardinals out in front back to Chuck Finley. That's a called strike to Ordonez who walked his first time. Well Albert Pujols was uh, not very happy. He was unhappy of that. Pitch that was up and in called a strike and then gets called out on a pitch on the outside. A long run for Edmonds. Not going to get there. Ordonez to second and he'll hold there. Edmonds the way he was starting after that ball looked like he thought it was going to get right there and catch it but he never did. You're right. I mean it looked like he was going to make the play. Then all of a sudden he looked like he just wasn't close enough. Well see he's playing pretty shallow anyway and a little bit toward right and the ball is hit in the left center field. Yeah he just he actually went at an angle at the end but I guess he just felt like he couldn't get there. So Ordonez with a double. Here's Astacio looking to move him over. Astacio struck out with the bases loaded and one out in the second. And that'll work. Tino Martinez being a covering at first. Looks to me like the strategy with Finley in the mound is anybody but Finley fields a bunch. <laughs> I mean, look to me like that would have been more his ball. It, it would have been Tino's. easier. You're right. Well, here's Finley. He doesn't come in. Watch him. I mean, usually when you notice a bunt, you charge in. He doesn't come in. I mean, Tino Martinez comes all the way up here. The fact that he's right-handed, you see he had to whirl all the way around the throw. That would have been a little faster runner. Would have been a very difficult play for Tino. One strike to Roger Cedeno. He has struck out and hit into a force play. 
By the way, Pedro Astacio got a sacrifice there. But Joe, did you know he's had 612 career at bats without hitting a home run? That is second among second most among all active players, regardless of position. Number one, Kurt Schilling. Look out. I'm surprised that Kurt has never hit a home run. I mean, he looks like he could hit one. That's what I mean. He's big and strong. Now, Sedano a little upset with Finley, and Sedano and Finley are a little uh, having uh, some remarks being exchanged. Well, the pitch is not that far inside. He just moved late. Now, watch the ball is out here, but he just moves late. Ball one strike to Sedano. And he chases the splitter. That seems like a cagey pitch from a veteran with a guy at the plate who's upset. <laughs> Come right back with the uh, split. I mean, he wants to hit it hard, right? Right, he's, exactly. He's angry. You're going to overswing. Anytime someone knocks you down, the tendency is to swing harder at the next pitch. Or when you think they knock you down, I should say. Timo Perez on deck. Ordonez at third. Breaking for the plate is Ordonez. And Roland throws him out. The tag by Matheny. Well, that's one of those plays where you go on contact, meaning when the ball is hit, it doesn't matter where it's hit, you're going. Now watch him. As soon as the ball's hit, he takes off. He doesn't care where it is, but it's grounded right to the third baseman. Easy throw to the plate, and Ordonez is out. If that ball is grounded to shortstop or any place else, he's probably going to beat it out, unless it's going back to the pitcher, of course. But you're going on contact, so you go right away when the ball is hit. So now, Cedeno at first base. Here is Timo Perez. He's flat out deep to left center and single. There goes Cedeno. Well, see, that was fouled back and out of play. And I, I was wanting to get in so I could say, the first thing you do is throw to first base now because you know he wants to steal the base after, you know, he thinks you threw at him. Well, Roger uh, finally uh, realizes he has to go back to first base. Well, the one thing, and for all the kids out there, make, let the umpire tell you to go back. Don't go back just because the shortstop says go back. <laughs> or the second baseman. I mean, I've seen it happen in the major league. So Randy Marsh told him to go back, and, and finally he did. Right. On one to Perez. They'd like to get Perez out here. Mike Piazza up next. And then they'll take their chances. Down by three. Get a couple of men on and see what happens. Piazza has a double tonight. And John, I know it's been difficult for all the Mets, but I think it's been very difficult for Mike Piazza. You know, he coming into this season, as you said, he thought he was going to have all this thunder around him. You know, Jeremy Bennett, Mo Vaughn, he thought, you know, Alomar, he thought all these guys were going to be there to take some of the burden of the offense off of his shoulders. And that has not happened. So I think it has to be very difficult for him to keep up his intensity day in and day out from the opening day to now. Well, he's, he said this time of year, the games mount up. Right. The wear and tear being a catcher. And in terms of working out, there is no working out. It's just trying to conserve as much strength right. and energy as he can for the next game. There goes Cedeno. And Finley throws out Perez. The inning is over. One hit, one left. Last half of the fifth inning. Scott Rowland coming up. He has a home run tonight. Three nothing Cardinals. Cardinals three. Mets nothing. Top of the, or rather the last of the fifth inning. The Cardinals coming up with Scott Rowland. Only two for his last 32 coming into this game. But tonight he has hit a single to left and he is also a homer to left center. Curveball for a strike from Pedro Astacio. Roland admitted that he was pressing a little bit when he first got over to the Cardinals after the trade. And he said, I, I suppose it was just natural trying to do a little bit too hard to make it look like a good deal. Well, he wants to impress his teammates first and foremost. So 
a lot of times you do try too hard. So it's in human nature. Right. You, you want your teammates to have the, res the respect. Bush Stadium is now rocking and rolling. Scott Rowland, that is. Two and one the count. And a pop up off the fists. Mo Vaughn giving chase. Nope. Runs into the tarp, and the ball just back into the first row. Two and two to Rowland. Well, Rowland, I mean, is the kind of a guy, let's say he re signs here, starts the year here next year with this group hitting around him where he doesn't have to be the guy without the controversy and of the contract and all that stuff. I mean, he might blossom and do things that he never did in Philadelphia. Either. Well, the one thing is, I mean, he plays so great defensively that, you know, he's going to earn his keep just defensively at third base. Slider off the outside. Three and two. There's Walt Jockety, the Cardinals senior vice president and general manager who executed the trade to get Roland over here. Of course, the Cardinals didn't get him here just for a couple of months. They want to sign him to a contract extension. Keep him here. And that slider misses. A leadoff walk for Roland. Meanwhile, an update. Here's Bill Pito. All right, John Kurt Schilling, 19th win of the year. Seven innings and eight strikeouts as Arizona beats Florida. Schilling the fastest of 19 wins and Randy Jones back in 1976. And Adrian Beltre, a sack fly, has the Dodgers in front of Philadelphia. 3-2, playing the top of the sixth. Matt Kurt Schilling 19 and 4 and uh, Randy Johnson 17 and 4. The Diamondbacks well in front in the National League West. Here's Tino Martinez rolling at first. And back to the bag he goes. Tino has hit into a force out and he has also singled off the leg of Pedro Astacio. 3 0 Cardinals last of the fifth. Tino without an RBI this month. Again, rolling back to the bag. I mean, the Cardinals as a team haven't done much this month. Their team average coming into play tonight in the month of August was 201. On one to Tino. I asked Tony La Russa before the game. I said, any, any theories, explanation as to why the team has gone into this slump? And Tony basically said, hey, they happen. The, the guys are in a slump. Slumps happen in baseball. And he, he says it's a, a veteran team. Too many guys with track records. You know it's going to end at some point. And maybe tonight. Extra base hit for Chino. Stopping at third is Roland. A double for Chino Martinez. One of the things that I've always admired about Tino Martinez is that he can keep that ball on the inside corner fair down the right field line. A lot of guys would hook this ball foul, but he's able to keep it fair without letting it hook. Watch this. Ball's inside. See that? And he's able to keep it fair. The ball doesn't hook. It just stays right there and goes down the line. Very few left-hand hitters can do that. And you see the ball hustle back in and he knows his second, Rollins at third with no one out. Second and third, nobody out. And Edgar Renteria coming up. The Mets are going to play back at short and second, up the middle. But pulled in at third and first. Astacio has constantly been in trouble tonight. Cardinals have had base runners in every inning. They put 12 men on base all told against him. Seven hits. Three walks. He's hit a batter, plus there was an error. Bullpen activity now. Jamie Serda, a left-hander up in the Mets bullpen. The Cardinals already had 3-0, and here's Edgar Renteria. He's been one of the top clutch hitters in the league this year. Going back is Perez. Still going back. Jumps up and makes the catch. Both runners tag up. Coming in to score is Roland. Tino over to third, and it is 4 nothing Cardinals. Renteria knocks in the run. And John, when you talk about a productive out, that's what that's what we're talking about right there. Not only does he get the runner in from third, but he moves the runner from second over to third so he can score 
on a ground ball or a fly ball. He gets him to second, third with less than two outs. Nice play in center field by Perez. He catches it and he hustles the ball back in. Well, the grass a little bit moist. It's they had a lot of rain here earlier today. Now the infield comes in for Mike Matheny. He has had an infield single. He's been walked intentionally. Looking Martinez back to third was Astacio. Well, that's because Matheny, they will squeeze with Matheny. And they were just trying to see if anything was going on. Matheny, eight hits in 12 lifetime at bats against Astacio. The infield in all the way around. And but they're, they're convinced that La Russa has the squeeze in mind. Well, John, what you do here if you're the Mets, you just throw three balls outside or two, and then you end up walking the guy. You shouldn't be pitching to Matheny anyway. So what you're trying to do is catch the Cardinals in a squeeze situation. So what you do is you keep throwing out, pitching out. This should be another pitch out, and if they don't, if it doesn't work, then you go ahead and walk him. Well, they're not doing that. 2-0. See, that, it doesn't make a lot of sense to me to pitch to Matheny, who's hit Pistachio especially well when you have the pitcher on deck. Well, now they're going to walk him. I mean, it, I, I thought that they would just try to pitch out twice, trying to catch the Cardinals in a squeeze situation. But this is more, this is what you should do anyway, just walk him and pitch to the pitcher. It'd be different if Estacio had a great record against a guy like Matheny, the eighth place hitter. But he doesn't, so there's no point in pitching to him anyway. You really do not gain anything. Right in the first inning, Finley came up with the bases loaded and one out and laid down a bunt, not a suicide squeeze bunt, a safety squeeze bunt, and it ended up being an error by Mo Vaughn, and the run scored. Well, if you're Tony La Russa, I'd do it again. I uh, sacrifice. You don't squeeze. You sacrifice and move another runner in the scoring position and leave it up to Fernando Vena. Gino Martinez at third. Mike Matheny at first. Yeah. That's the bunt. And that's what you should do. I mean, once they walk Matheny, you go ahead and bunt him to second and leave it up to, you know, your, your leadoff hitter. Because, again, you do, the last thing we want is you, if you're the Cardinal, this for Finley to ground into a double play. Now he's going to come over and uh, chat with Jose Okendo. This is Vina on deck. Well, I think what he's going to tell him, John, to be honest with you, is bunt it to first base. Bunt it to that side of the field, not down the third base line. Because if you bunt it down the first base line, you have a chance. If you bunt it over here, you have a chance for this runner to score. But if you bunt it down here, he can't score because the third baseman is in close. So he bunt it to the first base. That's where he wanted him to do. That's foul. You want to give yourself a chance that if he makes a good bunt, a real good bunt, the runner from third can score. But if he doesn't make a good bunt, then the runner from first is going to go to second anyway. And the good point is if you're bunting, the guy at third base allows the runner at third base to get a big lead because he's going to charge in from third, which allows the runner from third to move down the line as well. So if you make a good bunt on the right side, he can score. Oh, and to the count. He should be bunting again. The squares. Did he bunt at it? No. An appeal was made to Larry Van over the third base umpire, but he said no bunt. One ball, two strikes. The Reds won today on that extra inning home run by Aaron Boone. At the moment, they're a game and a half back of the Cardinals in the central. Finley pops the bunt. Foul. Let it drop. It doesn't matter. Piazza is upset with himself for dropping it, but it didn't matter. It was strike three. Well, the, the problem is if you catch it, it allows the runner at first to maybe take a chance and take off if you want. If he wants to go. Because you're running, the catcher's running away from the play. So if the runner at first base wants to tag up and you catch it, it allows him to do that. See, now watch Piazza's running away from the infield. Watch, he's got his back to the play, and he's running away. Now, if the guy on first base wants to tag up, if he catches it, now what is he going to do about it? Nothing. 
because you don't want to make a long throw to second base with a runner at third base. So the smart thing to do would just be let it drop anyway. You know, I, I wish he'd caught it. And if he'd caught it, I wish that Matheny had tagged up right. and gone. I mean, that's a play. I've only seen that play executed one time. Well, I mean, there's, all, there's, there's very little way to defend against. There's no way. Other to than to let that guy go to second, there's right? no way to defend against. Exactly. I mean, if you throw from back near the backstop all the way to second, that runner at third is going to score. Exactly. That's why, you know, I was saying you should let it drop because there's no defense because, first of all, the pitcher's coming in, so you do not have a cutoff man. So your throw is going all the way to second base if you're trying to get Matheny. So uh, that's a play that I've seen work a lot of times. I mean, we, all, we used to practice it. When I played for Reds, you'd practice that if you know if the ball popped up and you're at first base, you take off all the time, make him throw. Fernando Vina, first guy I ever heard talk about that kind of a play was the catcher, Ted Simmons, right? Former Cardinal. Well, he probably knows what am I going to do if I catch yeah. it? Yeah. You know, go back to the screen runners. It's really kind of a first and third type right. play. Definitely. And you catch a foul ball back to the backstop or or any place where it's a long throw. Yeah. You know who I saw do it? The runner who broke from first base was Joe Carter mm -hmm. with Cleveland. And it worked. They got the run home from third. At the strike now to Fernando Vina. Two and one. Jim Traber actually caught at the first baseman for Baltimore. Here's that pitch from K Zone. Right there in the corner. Right on the inside corner. Two and one the count. Deep down the right field line, but hooking foul. Vina, he got some McGuire muscles there. It's a big back. He didn't hit a foul. I mean, 1998. I don't. He never hit a foul ball home run, did he? Uh, probably not. <laughs> I mean, when he hit number 61 off the restaurant window out there, right down the line, and he kept it fair. He moved ahead of the babe with. A Ruthie in home run. Then number 62 the next night. That was his shortest home run out of the 70s. You know what? I, I still amazed at what he said when Barry Bonds was chasing his record. He said he, he'll hit 72 or 73. That was his quote. Vina down on strikes, and the Cardinals get just the one run. We're going to the sixth. The power is coming up. Piazza, Mo Vaughn, Roberto Alomar. The Mets are down four nothing. ESPN Sunday Night Baseball Game of the Week, presented by Nextel, brought to you by the totally new 2003 Ford Expedition, and by MasterCard. There are some things that money can't buy. For everything else, there's MasterCard. John Miller and Joe Morgan with you from Bush Stadium in St. Louis, and here's Mike Piazza swinging and missing at a changeup from Chuck Finley to start the sixth inning. Piazza has hit a double tonight, and he is also grounded out to short. And Piazza is now 34 years old. And I said, what hurts? And he said, hey, what doesn't hurt? I mean, he's a catcher. It's August. He's 34. He's banged up. That's a big curveball into his 0-2. But this is the, the thing with Piazza. He's the key man in the lineup. Right. The other guys have not delivered as, as hoped. You know, and with the club starting poorly, playing inconsistent baseball, it is extremely difficult for Piazza to take a day off. And I've always been amazed at catchers because obviously they have to be very strong in order to play that position. But, I, you know, just think about Yvonne Rodriguez catching all those games and catches in Texas in the heat. And it showed that his average went down each year, you know, I mean, each month. In August, September, so forth, his, his average always went down. I mean, it's almost impossible to, to hit 330 as Mike does every year and catch as often as he does. Well, look at that. He's had nine straight. 300 plus batting average seasons and not that many have done that the splitters strike three but it's going to take a real hot finish for him to reach 300 this year Mo Vaughn coming up he was off to a terrible start Mo Vaughn told us about how he got some advice from Roberto Alomar that helped him he kept saying that you know you're spinning off the ball you're not staying through the ball wow. You know, where your success was through, was through the middle of the field, you need to do that and, and feel for that. And I think, you know, I knew that too, but I just had to get adjusted. 
Bo Vaughn has uh, flied out to shadow left and struck out looking tonight. Well, you know, Alomar is a veteran. He's seen a lot of good hitters, and he has his theories about hitting. And what he probably saw is Mo, because he set out last year, you're always going to try to catch up with the ball first. That's your first thought. I got to catch up with the fastball. And to do that, sometimes you spin out. And that's what he was doing early. Chewing on the ball. Finley did not like that call. Well, you saw Mo's numbers early on, but his last 46 games, 15 home runs. That's a, you know, that's a 45, 50 home run pace in the last 46 games. More what you would expect from Mo Vaughn. Over the left center, but there is Edmonds. Out number two. And Finley's on a roll here. He shut out the Mets now for five and two-thirds innings. Well, Finley has tried to keep the ball in on Mo Vaughn all night long. And you see the targets inside. I don't know why they want to go down and in, but it's inside and it stays inside, and it makes him fight the ball off instead of extending to get it. Mets have only one hit since the third inning. That's ball one to Roberto Alomar, who has walked and grounded out to second. You know, the Mets added a lot of players, you know, thinking that, and, and most of the guys they added, they thought they were impact players. Mo Vaughn, Roberto Alomar, Jeremy Burnett, and Roger Cedeno. Cedeno was supposed to be the leadoff hitter, hit, you know, play center field, steal 50 bases or so. Burnett was supposed to hit 30 home runs, driving 100 plus runs. And Mo Vaughn, of course, and Roberto Alomar. All these guys are supposed to be impact players, but they have not had a big impact, you know, with the Mets this year. Edgar Renteria. Alomar retired. Three up, three down. That's 11 out of the last 12 Mets. Retired by Chuck Finley, who's rolling along. Drew, then Edmonds and Pujols coming up. Sunday Night Baseball, presented by Nextel. For Stadium St. Louis, hard on the shores of the mighty Mississippi. And the Cardinals, the hometown nine, leading this rubber match of a three-game series with the Mets. 4-0. Pedro Stacione, 11-game winner. But he, it has not been an easy night for him. There have been base runners in every inning. Drew looks at the off-speed pitch for a strike. Drew has struck out, been hit by a pitch, and fly deep to center. A lot of power coming up here. Drew, who hits with power, then Edmonds behind him, and then pool holes. And that change up in the dirt for a ball. One ball, one strike. Now, the, the Cardinals, Drew, he's got the, a problem with his knee. Difficult for him to play more than maybe two games in a row. Needs frequent days off. And uh, he's been struggling, especially here in the summertime. But Drew is a guy who's had some numbers in the past. They know he's capable of becoming a huge star. And Edmonds, pool holes, rolling. And they got a lot of guys. If they all get going together, this team could score a ton of runs. For John, you know, truthfully, that's kind of what you're looking at with the Mets. I mean, with Alomar, you, these guys have a track record. And you say, well, they're having bad season this year. Can they pick it up and do it again next year? You know, play well again next year, do the things that they've done all their career. And you say, yes. Oh, that got him in the foot. Curveball that hit Drew in the foot. He's hit for the second time tonight. But, John, the question is whether the Mets can afford to wait. I mean, the Mets have a payroll of around $104 million. Can they wait another year for these guys to perform as they're capable of performing? I don't know exactly what that pitch was. It looked like it was more of a change-up than anything else. So got him right in the foot, and Drew is aboard. Now Edmonds struck out looking, flight out to right center, and walked. Two holes on deck. Good hard in the right field and in front of McEwing for a base hit. Hit number eight for the Cardinals. They've had 15 men reach base against Pedro Astacio. And here's Pujols who could break this one up and in a hurry. And Charlie Huff is going out. Well, they've tried to fire him up with fastballs in. Well, they throw the fastball out over the middle of the plate almost, and he just rips it to right field. He was having problems with the ball up and in or fastballs in, but they got that one out over the plate. 
They've got the bullpen going. There's the, the left-hander, Serda, number 43, and Strickland, number 25, the right-hander. Both warming up in the Mets bullpen. Randy Neiman, the bullpen coach out there with him. Huff has had his conference now with Astacio, and Piazza goes back out for a couple more words. Astacio's thrown 107 pitches in only five-plus innings. So these have been real high-stress kinds of pitches. A lot of pitches, a lot of pitches with men all over the base pads in a short time. And now, one of the most feared sluggers in the National League, Albert Pujols. Tonight he is 0 for 3, although he drove one deep to right center back in the third. Two on, nobody out. Look out. Hard sinker running way inside. One ball and no strikes. Pujols hit a grand slam yesterday. He has 84 RBIs for the year, sixth in the National League in that category. It's a pretty impressive list in front of him. Berkman, Sean Green, Sammy Sosa, Luis Gonzalez, Pat Burrell, 2 and the count. Well, if you're Pistacio, this would be the most important pitch you've thrown in the ballgame because you have to make a good pitch here. Whether you throw the fastball or the change, it better be in a good location. Chuado. Going back in right field is McNeiling. It will stay in the yard onto the warning track. He grabs it, tagging up, moving to third is Drew. Well, we've seen Pujols hit the ball well to right field twice tonight, but he couldn't get it out of here. Let's take a look at this pitch. Well, he did not make a good pitch. Pujols just misses it. This is a fastball middle of the plate and belt high. And he's just a little late on it. So now Scott Rowland and Astacio has not retired Rowland tonight. And Piazza back out to the mound to talk to Astacio here. Rowland has singled, homered, and walked. This copyrighted telecast is presented by authority of the commissioner of baseball and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without express written consent. And you can uh, show support for your favorite team with the MLB Authentic Collection. Log on to MLB.com to order your player quality merchandise right now. Well, that's going to do it for Astacio. Uh, Piazza just went out there to stall for time. Charlie Huff has signaled to the bullpen. And Strickland, the right hand, is going to come in to face Roland. Two on, one out. Bill Peter back in the studio as we update the Phillies and the Dodgers. LA coming in one game in front in the race for the wild card spot in the National League. Bobby Abreu off the base of the wall. Run comes in to score. And the Phillies come back to tie the game 3 3, playing the bottom of the seventh from Los Angeles. Thanks, Bill. Mike Lieberthal having another pretty good game, too. He had three home runs there last night. 4 nothing the score here. The Cardinals leading the Mets. And there is 26-year-old right-hander Scott Strickland, acquired from the Montreal Expos right after the opening day of the season. Strickland, who had a, a very strong year for the Expos last year, was initially a setup man in front of Armando Benitez for the Mets, but uh, they moved him back a little bit now. He bluffs toward third and looks toward first. He's got Drew at third, Edmonds at first, and Scott rolled on the hitter. He was a sometime, he was a closer for the Expos before he came to the Mets. Or a, a sometime closer. He had yeah. nine saves there last year. Sometime. All of them are sometimes. Huh? Fastball, a little bit low. He throws hard, but he has, uh, the, the Mets have lost 16 games this year where the other team you know, scored the winning run in its final at bat of the game. And Strickland has given up that winning run seven times, four times on a home run. Rolling down the right field line. If it's fair, it's trouble. That ball is a fair ball. Drew scores. Edmonds being waved home. And he'll score. Roland heading for third. Two. A 
triple for Scott Rowland. And he's having a big night. Six to nothing, St. Louis. Scott Rowland now. A single, a triple, and a homer. This is one of the things that makes Scott Rowland a good hitter is that he can go the other way. And he's so strong, so he's late on this fastball and just kind of fights it off almost. But he's strong enough that when he hits it late like that, he drives it down the line and it stays fair. It doesn't really hook. It's right at the base of the wall and he has a triple and two RBIs. They're going to walk Tino Martinez intentionally with rolling at third and one out. Tino's had a single and a double tonight. He has not had an RBI this month. Well, no wonder, Joe. Every time he gets a chance, they walk him intentionally. <laughs> at least from what we've seen tonight. First and third, and Edgar Renteria is coming up. But you're walking a guy here who's not been driving in runs, and Renteria has been one of the best in these situations in the league this year. Yeah, but the only thing they're looking for here is to set up a double play so they can get out of the inning with one ground ball. So just a bad spot no matter which yeah, way you look it at it. It doesn't matter who was hitting, they'd have to do this. speed from start to finish the triple you saw Roland when he got to second it looked like he was picking up his third base coach I I had the feeling that he anticipated he'd be stopped at second base and then he really turned it on when he got the go ahead to head for third one ball and no strikes to Renteria he has singled and scored hit into a force play and had a sacrifice fly in a spot similar to this back in the fifth inning Hunter and third, less than two outs. Chuck Finley, the beneficiary of all of this uh, offensive opulence, and the, the Cardinals have not had many games like this lately. Let's say in the last 10 games, they've had no games like this. And Taria chased one that time. One ball, two strikes. Well, there's the hole in the, you can see a little slide piece away. Renteria chases it. Now, is he talking to a general manager? <laughs> I doubt it. That uh, that uh, offensive guy we were talking about, we don't need him. Sorry. <laughs> two and two the count. Jockety, I asked him, I says, is, are you going to make a trade? And Walt says, uh, well, if I was, I wouldn't tell you. <laughs> That's pretty, <laughs> well, it's honest. And I said, well, you mean just me or any any media people? He said, yeah. any media people. Right. Oh, it wasn't personal. That one hit high in the air to left field. Roland's going to tag up. That one in kind of medium left. Cedeno. One, two bounces to the cutoff man. And not only does Roland score, but Tino Martinez moves over to second base. Seven to nothing, St. Louis. Pretty good at pitch to hit, but you know you're going to hit it in the air. High breaking ball. So Daniel throws it into the ground. It doesn't even reach the infield. And it didn't get to the cutoff man, so that allowed Tino Martinez to tag up and go to third, second, as well as Scott Rowling being able to come in and score. And we're going to walk Matheny to get to Finley. This is the third consecutive time that Matheny has been walked intentionally in this game. Now, I read this in the paper today, Joe. I'm not looking at the record book, but Barry Bonds was walked intentionally three times yesterday. This is a record. And I read that that was a record. Yeah. yeah. Or, or tied the record. No, no, he passed, I think, Willie McCovey. Well, no, he re he passed him for the for the season. Intentional. Intentional. 46 intentional walks yeah. of the year. Yeah. He, he had 46. Bonds passed him with three intentional bases. His, but it, he tied the all-time record for oh. a single game. All-time record. Yeah. And so, too, has Mike Matheny then tied the all-time record here with three intentional walks in a game. A little it's a record, Joe, and yeah, we were here for it. Yeah, but a little different, though. We'll be able to tell our kids 
I mean, if they had to, they could pitch to Messina. They couldn't pitch the box in those situations <laughs> yesterday. Well, plus, I mean, they were walking bonds with Benito Santiago, right. an actual hitter coming out. Right. He finally hit a grand slam the third time they walked bonds. Finley takes a fastball for a strike from Strickland. Three runs are in. It is seven to nothing. The Cardinals leading. Six of the runs tonight have been charged to Pedro Astacio. The first time all year that he'd given up, that he has given up more than four runs in a game. And two of those four were painted as far as I'm concerned. Shouldn't have happened. Yeah, should not have happened. Six runs, five earned officially, but really should have been four runs. Not okay. that the official score got it wrong. Well, I, I I disagree with you. I think he did get it wrong. Well, I think he got his call wrong in that inning. And yeah, he exactly. called it an error on Moe, which was right. Yeah. But, but I think Moe was going to field it and go home and get and had plenty of time to get the out at home. It was forced out at the plate. So if you're going to get him an error, then the run should not have been earned. So I'm actually agreeing with you. Thank you. As you were disagreeing with me. <laughs> And they get the out. Are you with me on that one? I'm with you. All right. I'm with you. Joe agrees with me. <laughs> Seven to nothing. Cardinals after six. Scott Rowland having a big night in St. Louis. <laughs> Cardinals seven. Mets nothing. Mike Piazza. Joe with the uh, ammonia towel. Yeah, that's that shows you how tired he is and. You know he's you know he's, it's a tough job catching is a tough job especially in a ball game like this where you're sitting back there you know for a long time each inning it's not like you're going one two three and out Ty Wigginson nice pickup and Rollins throws him out Rollins doing a little bit of everything tonight well he's been doing that all the time since he's been here in St. Louis he's been playing great defense but tonight he's adding that offense that they expected from him with the defense now watch he actually catches this ball behind him John watch this right behind him I mean he stretches out gets it behind him turn and make the throw and you catch it behind you like that because you want to get the good hop right there you see that nice play right there perfect throw not Joe McEwing well rolling three time gold glove winner former National League rookie of the year but he's sort of having his coming out party here tonight in St. Louis. Charlie Huff on the phone to the bullpen, meanwhile, for the Mets. Or, or, or maybe he's calling you. No. Okay. <laughs> I can't help him. Must be the bullpen. <laughs> Must be the bullpen. <laughs> we cannot help him, John. Big curveball to make Ewing for a strike. Well, we met mentioning about Scott Rowland and his coming out party for the Cardinals. Acquired for this stretch run here. How about Chuck Finley? I mean, Finley, the veteran pitcher, acquired to help bolster a rotation that said nothing but troubles, injury, tragedy all year long. Only one of their opening day starters is in the rotation right now. And Finley had struggled big time his last two starts, and especially in the last one against Montreal. But tonight he's got a shutout going into the seventh inning. Nick Ewing chases that splitter. And is tagged out by Matheny. Out number two. And John, not to take anything away from Finley because he pitched a great ball game. But remember, we said this at the beginning of the telecast that the Mets do not handle left-handed pitching well at all. They're the worst in the league hitting left-handed pitching, and I think he's exploiting that tonight. I mean, the guy's just a good pitcher, but you know, the Mets do not hit left-handed pitching well. There's Woody Williams. And they're hoping to get Woody back. Tony the Rooster said that uh, you know it's possible that he'll be back before September the 1st. He's not predicting it. He's had three bullpen sessions but has not faced any kind of live hitting and batting practice or anything else yet. No simulated games. There's Garrett Stevenson. He was originally penciled in to, to start yesterday's game but had some uh, stiffness a knot behind his right shoulder. And was scratched. Luther Hackman made that start. There's Dave Duncan, the pitching coach. They've had 13 different guys start games for them this year. And according to Tony Larusa, Luther Hackman got a battlefield promotion yesterday. 
he started the game and he pitched four and a third innings, but he pitched well enough to earn himself another start. A little bit low to Ray Ordonez, who has walked and doubled in this one, three and one the count. Luther Hackman uh, out of the bullpen to make a start yesterday. And although he gave up the lead, the bullpen came on and uh, held him the rest of the way. They won it five to four. Three and two the count to Ordonez. But it also underscores, I mean, Hackman was an emergency fifth starter as John Valentin comes out on deck. And it sort of underscores the reason that Walt Jockety might have been on the phone with another GM. They'd like to get a, a starter to put in there in that fifth spot who's experienced in that role. A little bloop in the shallow right. Vina chasing out, but it's in there for a base hit. Picked up by Drew. So Ordonez is two for two. And now John Valentin will come up as a pinch hitter for Strickland. Seven to nothing, the Cardinals lead. Tomorrow, the Little League World Series will continue with a doubleheader on ESPN2 in the New England Regional. Massachusetts, the team from Worcester, up against Rhode Island, the team from Portsmouth at 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific. Following that game at 10 Eastern, 7 Pacific. The team from uh, Coeur d'Alene, Idaho, will take on uh, the team from Hawaii, from Waipahu, in the Western Regional. The Little League World Series presented by Honda on ESPN and ESPN2. That's a called strike to John Valentin. John Valentin and Mo Vaughn together again. They went to college together at Seton Hall University. Teammates with the Red Sox for many years. Reunited with the Mets this year. Valentin's uh, been a handy player off the bench for Bobby Valentine. Been able to play first base, third base, pinch hit. Three homers, 24 batted in. He's had eight hits in 31 pinch hit at bats. He's been the Mets' most often used pinch hitter. Mark Guthrie. The left hander up in the Mets bullpen. Let's see, they had uh, Valentin, Mo Vaughn, Craig Biggio, all in that Seton Hall University team. At one time, that's outside. One ball, two strikes. There's, is, there's Mo on the left, John Valentin on the right. 1988 Seton Hall baseball media guy. Mo Vaughn back in the uh, back in New York. Seton Hall in New Jersey. Matt Morris the Cardinals ace right hander also went to Seton Hall. There's Matt. 13 game winner this year 22 game winner last year. He was a later vintage Seton Hall baseball star. Three and two the count. By the way, did you see? I saw a note, Joe, that uh, Matt Morris' uncle, John Morris, led a group of uh, 37 New York firefighters into St. Louis this weekend. They met with Cardinal players and coaches and manager Tony La Russa before Friday's game. The group, uh, which all, all of them participated in the September 11th rescue efforts we're here for the, the entire weekend three and two the count to John Valentin thirty six thousand eight hundred ninety six the paid crowd at Bush Stadium tonight and they have to love what they've been seeing I mean this Cardinal team has been in a slump I mean it's it started the day after Scott Rowland made his debut for the club, the whole club just went into a, a funk offensively. Strike three on the outside. And Chuck Finley with his seventh strikeout of the game. And he has shut out the Mets through seven. Vina, Drew, and Edmonds coming up. The ESPN Sunday Night Baseball Game of the Week. Presented by Nextel. Nextel, how business gets done. And in part by Reality. Ecstasy, so where's the love? Get the facts at freevibe.com. John Miller and Joe Morgan here with you from St. Louis. 7 to nothing. the Cardinals leading the Mets here in the rubber match of this series. 
And here is Mark Guthrie, the veteran left-hander. He's having quite a year for New York. 1.66 ERA, 38 innings pitched, only 23 hits allowed. This guy's been around for a long time. And he usually, I mean, his, now his role is basically just to get a left-hander out here and there. Fernando Vina takes a curveball for a strike. One of his old teams, the Dodgers, has fallen back behind the Philadelphia Phillies, 6-3 to three in the eighth inning in L.A. Fernando Vina has doubled to the sacrifice fly, flied out and struck out officially. One for three. J.D. Drew on deck. Good spot for Guthrie to come in with three left-handed hitters in a row due up here. Vina, Drew, and Edmonds, the first three hitters in the Cardinal batting order. There's Drew. He hasn't had a hit tonight, but he's been hit twice. Got hit in the sixth inning. That started a three-run rally. Edmonds in the hole. And Vina out of the reach of Wigginson. Base hit. Meanwhile, here's an update with Bill Pito. All right, John, Giants and the Pirates, bottom of the 11th, all tied up. Ramon Martinez here for San Francisco. Game-winning base hit as the Giants win at 5-4. They trail L.A. by one game in the race for the wild card spot right now. Phillies and the Dodgers, speaking of Los Angeles, 3-3. Jimmy Rollins here in the eighth. He's got 5-for-5. Five five. Drives in Tomas Perez. That makes it 4-3. It's now 6-3 fills in the top of the eighth inning. Jimmy Rollins. How about that little flip? A little flip to left field. Well, that's uh, that's the way you you figure him at his best. Well, isn't it? well, that's what you want from a guy, not try to hit it too hard. I mean, he's got some power, he's got some pop, but he's got incredible speed, and uh, it, he's been slumping. Rollins hit about 160 in the month of July. So on a night with his old running mate, Scott Rowland gets it going here with his new club St. Louis Jimmy Rollins gets it going for the Phillies after a long slump J.D. Drew past Mo Vaughn through that open hole Vaughn was holding against the runner Vina takes second Drew gets his first hit so the first two of these left-handed hitters has had has each had a base hit against the left-hander Well, as a left-handed hitter, you always try to pull the ball towards the hole. And just out of the reach of move on. And you see Vigna had to let it go through, so he wasn't able to try to take third base. And D'Amico up in the Mets bullpen. Jeff D'Amico, right-handed, been in the uh, starting rotation until recently. So now Guthrie in a jam here in the seventh inning. Two men on, nobody out. It's Jim Edmonds, slider in the dirt. One ball and no strikes. Well, that Philly score, the Phillies leading the Dodgers, relevant to the Mets, even though the Mets are in the east and the Dodgers are in the west, because at this point, with the Mets way out of it in the east, they're in the other division, the wild card division. Albert Pujols on deck, or he's not on deck. He gets real over, way over close to home plate. Well, he's taking his stance and watching the ball out of the pitcher's hand as he will when he gets in the batter's box. Well, you see the pitch, and he reacts to the relief. He takes his stance over there. I don't think I've ever seen anyone get that involved. You usually watch the pitcher, but he he's, must, he's getting ready just like Edmund's getting ready. He's uh, 25 feet away from the on-deck circle. The Cardinals bullpen is getting busy now, both Pujols and Edmonds. We'll get ready for the next pitch here from Guthrie. Steve Klein has gotten up. He's been throwing for a while. The veteran Chuck Finley has gone seven shutout innings tonight. Edmonds and Pujols await this next pitch.
Well, it's tough enough to get Edmonds out. How about getting them both out at the same time? <laughs> that is difficult. Actually, the, the on-deck circles are there for a reason. You're supposed to be in the on-deck circle when you're waiting over here. And there's one on the Mets side as well. You're supposed to be there, but it's kind of like the coach's box. You're supposed to be in the coach's box, but if you look down at third base, we'll see that Jose Okendo is way out of the third base box. So they usually do not make you adhere to that rule unless somebody complains. In the dirt, it gets just past Piazza, and the runners will advance. A wild pitch. And now there are runners in second and third with nobody out. Well, Piazza tries to get his entire body in front of the ball. He just can't block it. One of the things I've seen a lot of lately is guys just reaching out there with one hand trying to catch it. But Piazza tried to get his entire body in front of it and block it, which is the way you're supposed to try to block the ball. Well, I mean, he kept it from getting past him to the backstop. It was pretty opportunistic running by the base runners. Ball just hopped right behind him by maybe five feet. Two and two the count. Oh, man. Tough pitch, and Edmonds strikes out. One down, and now Albert Pujols will actually come walk to bat. To the plate. Yeah. I don't think he'll hit, but he'll walk to the plate. Baseball America, before last season, in their list of prospects, listed Albert Pujols as the Cardinals' second top prospect. Here's what they predicted for Albert before last year. Pujols will likely start 2001 in double A and could be in the big leagues in 2002, though the Cardinals try to temper expectations. What are you trying to do, keep people from buying that book? No, no. <laughs> they know that. Uh, in fact, the Cardinals themselves had decided that he was going back to the minors, even though he had a great spring. And Albert lines one in the left center. That's going to be a base hit. Hits into the alleyway, rolls to the wall. Vigna scores. Drew scores. And it's a two-run double for Albert Pujols. They did pitch to him. And he does hurt him. It is nine to nothing as Albert adds two more to his RBI collection. Well, the fact that Scott Rowland has swung the bat so well tonight may have caused them to pitch to Pujols because first base was open and they had a place to put him and they probably wish they would have now walked him. That's a bullet in the left center field right up the gap. And he drives in two runs. So he's got 86 RBIs now. And now they're going to walk Roland with the left-handed batting Chino Martinez up next. So Roland has or would have had a shot for the cycle. He needs a double to hit for the cycle. This is sort of the, the Barry Bonds treatment. Thank you. With a nine to nothing score. You read my mind exactly. Bonds was walked intentionally in Houston the final week of last season. He was sitting on 69 home runs. I think the score was eight to one. The Giants were leading when Bonds was walked intentionally. There comes a point in the ball game where the theory is you just do not want to put any more runners on base, you know, so you can't, you know, catch up. Bonds walked 130 times this year. They keep tabs of that here in this ballpark. He walked four more times today, by the way. And his walk in the 11th inning started the winning rally for the Giants against Pittsburgh. The standings in the central, they also keep track of that here. The Cardinals ahead of Houston and Cincinnati by two each at the start of the day. Houston lost to Atlanta. Cincinnati won over San Diego. Here's Chino Martinez. He has not had an RBI in the month of August. St. Louis tonight is at three sacrifice flies. They've had a sacrifice bunt to drive in a run. And they've received five intentional walks in this game. Start the let's go Tino cheer here. Similar to the Yankee cheer. Let's go Yankees. One ball.
ball one strike. He's a, a Yankee fan in attendance tonight. We miss you in New York. I mean, he had a lot of fans. Tino had some very good years there, replacing Don Mattingly, who was a, an, an incredible favorite. Excellent years, but I don't know where he would play there. It's the obvious place. Two and one. Fastball. He had to jump out of the way. Cardinals were averaging two and a half runs per game the last 10 days. Hitting 208 in that time. Tonight, 12 for 28. A 429 average. They've got nine runs on the board and counted. Slide it low. Three and one. That's when the Cardinals brought Tino to St. Louis. I thought it was a perfect place for him, and I still do. I think this is a good spot for Tino. Three and one to Tino. Who holds it second? Rolling at first. They walk rolling intentionally to set up this matchup. Popped it up foul. And back out of play. You know, Martinez, one of the things, one of the reasons he was so popular in New York is he had some real big hits in postseason play in those playoffs and, and World Series, including that dramatic home run against Young Hyun Kim in game four of the World Series last year when the Yankees looked all but out of it. Runners going. The ball is swung on a miss. Now they've got two holes in a rundown. And two holes is tagged out by Wigginson. So a strikeout into a double play. Now to the eighth inning. Cedeno Perez and Mike Piazza do up. It is nine to nothing. The Mets are trailing. Coming up on Sports Center, Kurt Schilling pitches for his 19th victory, and the Ravens linebacker Ray Lewis will host the plays of the week. Join Stuart Scott and me, Dan Patrick, after the Mets and Cardinals, right here. Sunday Night Baseball on ESPN. Yes, thank you very much. And the Cardinals all over the Mets, leading nine to nothing, going to the top of the eighth inning. And there is Steve Klein on the pitch now, left-handed, and he's been struggling a bit lately. And uh, he really sort of lost it the other night here in the dugout after an inning where things didn't go well. He throws ball one to Roger Cedeno. He's on a relief of Finley. Seven shutout innings, only five hits allowed. Two walks. Finley threw 102 pitches. Roger Cedeno, 0 for 3. Takes a strike. One and one. Well, uh, Albert Pujols, there, there was a sort of a, a lingering question as to why was he running with one out in a 3-2 count. Nine to nothing. So we think we have the answer for you, so stay tuned. We'll, uh, we'll show that to you. We could tell you, but this is television. This is a visual media. That's a ball outside. So in a TV talk, I'm teasing oh, okay. the video that's still to come that will show why Albert Pujols was running, even though it was one out, not two outs. Right? Right. Okay. First and second. One out. One out. Ahead nine nothing. Right. Not a running situation. Exactly. Three and two the count to Roger Cedeno. Roland on the run. What an arm two down. Well, here it is. Let's watch the play and then listen for Albert, who's wearing a microphone tonight. So he ran. The runner at first, however, Roland did not. Then the run down. And here's what he said. My, my bad. I thought it was two out. My bad. <laughs> That's becoming an increasingly uh, in vogue <laughs> right. thing to say, right? Yeah, my bad. Not, 
I'm sorry yeah. it was my mistake but rather my bad. Yeah. <laughs> Timo Perez one for three. Hey Placido Polanco wouldn't have put that. Well he, he, oh, he wouldn't have gone. Right. Thank you. My bad. He thought he thought it was two outs. And the Mets, the Mets who uh, could use some relief at this point are thankful that he did. Two and one the count. Bobby Valentine, his Mets uh, have just not been able to uh, really get something substantive going. And we're laughing at that play, but if the score was two to two, it wouldn't have been very funny. Who else would have run? Third base, I mean second base on that play. Yeah. Two and two the count. I think his uh, comment would have been something different than my bad. Right. <laughs> How much do I owe you? Probably would have been the point. Coming up now after the ball game, Sports Center with Rich Eisen and Stuart Scott. The complete day around Major League Baseball. Kurt Schilling going for his 19th in the desert. The Sunday conversation with Keyshawn Johnson and Ray Lewis will host. He will host the plays of the week coming up next on Sports Center. Stay tuned. Mike Piazza, the hitter, two down, nobody on. Well, they, those people have—they've got it pegged, Joe. The countdown, the countdown to 25. Is it 25,000? 25,000 shows. Wow. Yeah. Soon. And you've seen them all. I've seen a few. 24,954. Does this four belong up there someplace? Yeah. yeah. They're trying to get in the shot. Somebody told him to squeeze together. <laughs> One ball, two strikes to Piazza. He's doubled, grounded to short, and struck out. Nine to nothing. Piazza and the Mets taking it on the chin tonight in St. Louis. Piazza recently hit a home run that tied him with Johnny Bench for second on the all time list of home runs by catchers. This one stays in the yard a single out to Albert Pujols in left center. So Piazza a two hit night. Maybe Carlton Fisk has the most home runs by catchers. Fisk at 351 that's the all time record. Johnny Bench and Mike Piazza 327 apiece. Fastball in he actually jams himself and breaks the bat. And the bat helps him to get a base hit because if he hit a little better, would have carried all the way to the outfielder. But watch when the bat breaks, he gets just enough on it to get it to the outfield for a base hit. Mo Vaughn and the appeal on a check swing denied by Larry Van over the third base umpire. So it's ball one to Mo. Mo tonight is hitless. He's flied out to shallow left, struck out looking, and lined out to left center. Not your typical Sunday night baseball game for Mo Vaughn. And usually Mo is the best of hitters on Sunday night baseball. 19 homers for the year. Most of those, 15 of them in the last 47 games. I picked up his bat today. He uses 36 inch, 36 ounce. Wow. Which is very unusual in today's game because most guys use 31 and 32 ounce bat. Look at that breaking ball in there. Strike two. Steve Klein trying to get himself back on target. And that slider misses down and away. Two balls, two strikes. Nine to nothing. The Cardinals out in front. Last of the eighth. Scott rolling a big night, a single, triple, and a homer. Albert Pujols a two run double. Tino Martinez a single and a double and a walk. If Steve Klein didn't have a glove on his right hand, you'd still know he was a left-hander. <laughs> he is—he looks like a left-hander. And strike three. A left-hander with a great slider and a bad hat. Nine to nothing. Cardinals over the Mets. Last of the eighth.
going nine. <laughs> Jim Edmonds, we are going nine. I like that. Out of the last of the eighth inning, the Cardinals leading nine to nothing. Maybe that's what he meant. Go for nine runs. There's Jeff Domingo. And the uh, starting pitching, uh, starting pitcher most of the year. Now in the bullpen for the first time. Five and ten with a 5.30 ERA and Renteria swinging and missing. Strike one. Other changes with D'Amico coming in. There's Vance Wilson not catching. As you see Renteria's night. Singled and scored in the second. Force out in the third. And a couple of sacrifice flies for him. Two high. One ball, one strike. Vance Wilson replacing Mike Piazza. Behind the dish. And Tony Tarasco in place a bow on at first base. He was playing first base with a look like an outfielder's glove. He ordinarily is an outfielder. Curve ball in the dirt for a ball. Two and one. There it is. It looks like he just took his outfielder's glove right on over the first base. And some of them are so big, they could be first baseman but No, that's a first base glove. The first baseman glove did not used to look like that. No, it did not. Right center field. Into the alleyway. McEwing has to chase it. And Renteria gets his second hit of the night. Before the game, Albert Pujols, wearing a microphone, had a chance to visit with Mo Vaughn. They talked about Mo's bat. This is Mike Sweeney's bat. I'm a little guy. I can't swing your bat, man. You know? I don't think I hold mine like this. <laughs> like that? Really? I can't hold my like that. I can't hold my like that. I hold my like this. I can't hold like that. I'll be, I, it makes my top, my back foot come up. It makes me get around the ball. I hold like that. Interesting. Yeah. And what we were talking about is Pujols used a lighter bat and Mo used a 36 ounce bat and Pujols said he couldn't swing Mo's bat. But Mo gave us another tip. He said he had one finger buried, which means that he can whip the bat through, whereas Pujols has both hands on top. And, and that allows Mo said to whip the bat through the zone, whereas Pujols, when he's on top, he leads with his top hand like this, whereas Mo was saying he has one finger buried. This finger's under the knob. He can whip the bat. He gives him a little more snap in the bat. And a lot of people use that one finger buried, it's called. You, you were, you just made TV history. How's that? You used the air bat. Oh. <laughs> it was light. I've seen guys play the air guitar, <laughs> but you actually <laughs> used the air bat. Well, here's cool. I've seen him. Mo Vaughn has one finger underneath the knob. His Both of his hands are right on top. See, his swing is a little different. He kind of throws the barrel of the bat at the ball, whereas Mo is saying he whips the bat, meaning he brings it from the inside a little bit. Who holds you had a two-run double his last time. Matheny the hitter, 0-2 the count, facing D'Amico. Right to second, and not in time. That was Marco Scucharo, by the way, now at second base. In place of Roberto Alomar, S-C-U-T-A-R-O, Marco Scudero. Actually, that's right. I, I actually had lunch today with our buddy, Ted Robinson, who works for the Mets. And that's what he told me, Scudero. He works there with the Mets on the radio. Kerry Robinson now, the pinch hitter for Steve Klein. So the Mets with uh, several changes here for the eighth inning. Wilson now behind the plate. Tarasco at first. Scudero at second. It makes me think of the Scooter. Yeah. Bill Rizzuto. One of your fellow and Hall of Famers. And he's in New York. But there's only one Scooter. Scooter and then there's Scudero. Scudero. Right. <laughs> there is uh, Kevin Joseph up in the Cardinals bullpen. The uh, young pitchers up for the minor leagues now in the Cardinal bullpen. 
Kerry Robinson, one ball, one strike to count. And pop up. Wilson coming back. Nice play. Almost climbed the backstop to get to that one. Robinson is gone, two down. This is a nice play by Wilson because if he waits for the ball, it'll hit the netting coming down, so he leaps up and catches it right above where it would have hit the net. So two men down. Vance Wilson with a very nice play. And now Fernando Vina. Nine to nothing. The Cardinals lead in the last of the eighth inning. Cardinals are going to Pittsburgh after this. They've got the Pennsylvania trip coming up. Four in Pittsburgh, and then next weekend, Scott Rowland returns to the vet. And Tarasco, outfielder turned first baseman, handles that one unassisted. One hit, one left. Out of the ninth inning from St. Louis. It is nine to nothing. The Cardinals out front. Last chance for the Mets. And we look forward to Sports Center, number 24,000. What do they say? Nine, I, I, 954. Closing in on 25,000 Sports Centers. There's Kevin Joseph, the right hander, caught up from a Triple A ball on August the 1st. He was 1-1 one one with a 1.99 ERA at Memphis this year. Opened the year on the disabled list until June the 10th, or not right at the beginning of the year, but early April, and then on the disabled list. Here is Marco Scudero, lead off against him. It's pretty good movement on that sinker on the count is 0-1. They've got Kevin Joseph and another guy named uh, Matt Duff. A couple of rookies in that bullpen, plus, plus uh, uh, Mike Crudale, who's been here most of the year and has done a great job been a year of opportunity for young pitchers in the Cardinal farm system guys like Jason Simon Tachi although he has run into a few bumps in the road here lately Travis Smith was in that rotation for a while now has been sent back to the minor leagues there's a Simon Tachi former Olympic star for the Italian Olympic team Final score from Dodger Stadium. The Phillies beat the Dodgers six to three. Jimmy Rollins five for five for the Phillies. So maybe he's uh, ready for a big finish. Exciting player. He's one of my favorite players. He is, and he's a very exciting player. Good strike three. A slider on the outside. Scudero caught looking. Big night for Scott Rowland. His coming out party at long last year in St. Louis. Roland with a single to left in the second inning. And then into the bullpen. His first home run as a Cardinal in the third. And then a triple in the sixth inning. And he's also been excellent afield, which he had been all the way through. And threw a base hit into center for Ty Wigginton. One out single for Wigginton, his first hit of the game. Scott Roland. Admitted that he, he was pressing when he first got over here. Although uh, I like Joe's, I like your uh, spin on it, which, I mean, number one, you're trying to impress your new teammates. Correct. That's the most important thing, I think, for you is to impress your teammates. But tonight, maybe he got a, a big burden off his back. A big night with the bat and with the glove. Cardinals winning in a blowout. I mean, they won their very first game after he came over. He had a couple of hits. And then they lost seven in a row. Scott Rowland went into a slump, and the whole team went, right, went with him. Everybody was in a slump. Joe McEwing, as the runner goes, McEwing hits a foul past third. Scott Rowland grew up up in Indiana. He told us about his memories of going to games here at Bush Stadium with his family as a youth. It was our family vacation, our once-a-year family vacation most of the time. It, uh, we'd go, uh, you know, we'd, we'd get some seats. Normally we're in the upper deck, and uh, we couldn't see, the, couldn't see the right fielder from what I remember. And, uh, but, but Ozzie Smith was out there, and Willie McGee was out there, and, you know, Tommy Hur in those days. So, uh, yeah, I have some great memories from that ballpark. I remember it being hot, too. Runner going again. The ball is taken low for a ball, 2-1. and one. And the reason it was hot there, they had AstroTurf. And that AstroTurf field was, you know, would get hotter than the natural surface now. 
He's to come and see Ozzy Smith. And uh, Willie McGee was one of those players. Willie McGee who was one of the top players in those Cardinal clubs in the 80s. Vince Coleman, I imagine he watched a, a few times. A dribbler foul off to the left. Two and two now to McEwing. No steal, by the way, for Wigginton because of the indifference of the Cardinals. Now that, the rule on, on the stealing, this is the situation that it was written for. You know, it, 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 a blowout game, the other team doesn't care if you go, go ahead. But they've used it they, they, at their they, discretion, which I don't like. I don't, I don't think that's right. Yeah, I, I agree with you. Vinia throws out McEwing as Wigginton goes to third. I mean, there are, there are times where a team will not defend against the steal, but it's still a tight ball game. Exactly. And there's a tactical reason for taking that extra bait, and the guy should get the steal there without question. Well, I definitely believe that it's only games like this where there is a blowout, where no one really cares whether you steal the base or not. But Did you ever steal one, and they didn't give you credit for several it? Several times. And I was irritated because it wasn't like this. It was four to nothing or something in that area. They just didn't try after me because they didn't figure they could get me, but it was four to nothing. That's not, you know way out of line. Ray Ordonez, who's had a walk, a double, and a single. Joe, who had six, 67 steals in 1975, and 60 the next year. And Renteria throws out Ordonez, and the Cardinals win this series over the Mets. Chuck Finley with a magnificent seven-inning performance. Big night for Scott Rowland. The Cardinals maintain a two-game lead over the Reds in the Central. Next Sunday, we're going to go to the Metrodome and check in on the red-hot Minnesota Twins up against the Boston Red Sox. We'll see you then. Nine to nothing, Cardinals. Sports Center is next. I'm John Miller with Joe Morgan. Good night.